A very good evening to everyone in Sri Lanka and from abroad and welcome to the Sugat Dasa Stadium for this all important 30th edition of the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy. As we have swim ball on from great pictures above head at the Sugat Dasa Stadium. And Royal College just seemed to have secured that first swim ball. So well done to the team at Reed Avenue looking to settle their D down early. Distribution to the prop. Great pictures there from above to see, see, show you that D positioning. Oh, what an excellent shot to start off with. And as we have turnover ball, St. Thomas's will look to get on the scorecard early. And joining me this evening, two very distinguished water polo players in the fraternity of Sri Lanka water polo, Shehan Dasanayaka, the captain of the national men's team and former Sri Lanka captain, uh, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, former Royal College captain. And also with me, we have no, Charya no. Dharmadasa, former Visaka College, Visaka Vidyalaya captain, and also having represented Sri Lanka in here to give you a lot of technical information about the game and their experiences in Sri Lanka. Excellent re response there from St. Thomas's College. That's the way they would have spoken about starting this first quarter in the second leg, having trailing in the first leg. We have two quick goals. Our college need concession. to pick their defensive it's game up here. Little, look a little too relaxed on defense. And St. Thomas's College quick to exploit that mistake. Ramiru Alutge looking for a shot in hope rather than distributing to the rest of his team. You've got, he's got six other field players there to get that ball working around and get the goalie tired. Instead, St. Thomas's College with good distribution on that right wing looking for their prop or their left bar. Royal College double marking the prop and so that right wing is free. Taking the shot. Early attacks all coming from the blue and black caps in the pool. Royal College quickly back on the back foot. And a lot of defensive questions being asked of them. Welcome, Shehan, to this evening's coverage. St. Thomas's go 2-0 up in this all-important encounter. Resting all the momentum that was created last year back in their favor now. I beg your pardon. Uh, the momentum created last week from that 25 to 12, 25 to 10, I think it was aggregate. And now they find themselves 13 goals behind. And a very quiet Royal College team in for this evening. Shehan, so if you were... On the Royal College side, having gone down by two goals, what would you be telling the boys right now? Well, looking at the last leg, we still have an up advantage over St. Thomas. Like, like you said, 13 goals, right? So just need to calm down a little bit and, and slow the game down a bit and get it under control, I think. Uh, Royal seems a bit too relaxed at the moment. Uh, maybe maybe uh, they have that 13 goal advantage back into the back of their heads, but I think they need to calm down a bit get the defense in order to start off with and then worry about the attack in my opinion. Royal College looking for their fast swimmers. They will look for Suleiman Shiha on the right wing. Litum Karnasena doing his best there to try and get that ball into the five meter. First extra man of the match and Royal not capitalizing on it. St. Thomas's College with a lot of options. Looking to distribute into the prop. Good positioning, good awareness. <laughs> Unlucky not to find the back of the net there. Good turn and shoot from the cap number six of St. Thomas's College.
Tetum Karna Sena. I beg your pardon, Dinal Velapili. The man known for earning those extra mans and exclusions on penalty now. Excellent shot. Excellent shot by Dinal Velapili. Sending the goalkeeper one way and then taking the other corner. Calm, relaxed head on that number 12 for Royal College and the left bar. So St. Thomas's have to be careful. Even last week, it was all about drawing the exclusions, earning those penalties, playing the game at a high technical degree and making use of the international referees that, are, that have been flown down, especially for this occasion. And also knowing very well that when they tour this under-17 Sri Lanka team, which is the junior team, they will have to be in line with what the referees will call their... Tehan on the wing good option to pass to the bar but also he had a bit of space in front of him could have faked and gone in a little more and Reza I think Royal seems to be um, collecting themselves on the defence that um, is transferring into their attack as well St. Thomas is still very aggressive on the attack Excellent try there, excellent try. St. Thomas's College asking a lot of, lot of questions from this Royal College defence early on. Looking for the outside shots as well. And looking to swim in. But the question is, can you sustain that kind of pressure through four quarters? Royal College is, knowing, is known as a better swimming team from the scoreline of which the scoreline of last week suggests. Again, the defence is holding up for Royal College. Right, Bari, having had a good game last week, will want to add to that performance and make sure that he is the wall that Royal can rely on at this on this under A15 encounter. Royal look a little bunch, Shehan, in that D formation. Excellent save by the St. Thomas's goalkeeper. Cap number one for a reason, D. E. Pereira. Will make his coaches proud and his schoolmates, everyone who has gathered here at the Sugadasa today, in, at, in anticipation of a real Thomian comeback. And as we go into a slight stoppage, we'll give the players a chance to have a breather and collect their thoughts. A lot of expectation on this under-15 team, Shayan. You've played here before and uh, really a good rest rehearsal for the 19th game as well. Excellent Absolutely. defense there by the cap number five of St. Thomas's College. Jay Vikramasinghe helping out his goalkeeper there. This will all count towards the last tally. So your thoughts on the under-15 encounter, Shehan? Sorry, just caught up on the game here, Reza. Sorry. Uh, so... Again, St. Thomas is very much on the attack and very aggressive, but uh, maybe a little too aggressive there, getting a turnover. I think <coughs> first time out of the game. I think Royal taking the time out, I feel in the right uh, time, just calming the nerves down a little bit. Um, the game is, I think, very much on a high pace at the moment, just telling the boys to calm down, collect on the defence, because St. Thomas's is very much on the attack and trying to shoot as much as possible from the top. And, and I think um, these guys need to understand that uh, first few goals count as much as possible. So, tightening down on that defence is the call, in my opinion. I believe that's the same thing that Akta and Omira will be telling their team. Yes, good time out for the coaches and for us up here in the commentary box as well, just to catch our breath. It's it's a game that has been fast forwarded almost, Shayan, from the time we used to play, and of course now from the time you all had played under 15. Uh, but a nice venue, a nice setting. We've got international referees, uh, shot clocks on either side of the pool, a digital scoreboard. So really, uh, the game being taken. Uh, very seriously in Sri Lanka. Absolutely. I think 
um, going back about 17 to 18 years, Reza, uh, we, like I said, it was a very much of a different setup that we had. Um, I think the 15ers have come a long way in terms of skill, in terms of understanding the game. And, and their swimming skill, etc., has come a long way. I think the game has developed so much more in that last 15 to 18 years, I would say. And I think it's fair to say that uh, the, the planning and the tactics would almost shadow an under-19 program now, just in the way that they are, uh, they're expected to play, Shehan. Very much so, yes. And we see the second goal from Royal College. Unfortunate for the Tomian defence. He had the right idea in mind, but just ricocheting off that goalkeeper's hand and into the back of the net. But Royal going to a set play, obviously, from the centre. We've seen this kind of play in the under-19 games as well before. Back when Daishiga Dais was at centre and then Basit Yakub and then seen it from Isura Kahandavala. Danush Kaseram going back all the way. But good to see these under-15 teams emulating those under-19 teams of the past. It was absolute of a cracker of a goal there by the Thomian number 11, S.D. Migama. Well, college just seemed to have switched off there. We heard a buzzer going off on the side, which may have led to the confusion of the ball being turned over, which is why you saw a lot of Royal defenders leaving their marker man and then swimming back on attack. But really, you've got to have your eyes on the referee and nothing else. Edum Karunasena looks bunched there. He needs to get closer to that two meter to allow his D to come in. His playmakers are the two barmen and allow, allow them to come in and take a shot. And instead, that bunching results in Thomian turnover. And now St. Thomas is taking the ball up that left wing, looking for distribution in the center. Will they look for their proper game? The go to man who scored that goal previously. Excellent try there. So, really. For someone who's at the stadium and with a with a bigger with, with a larger bird's eye view of this game, you would have noticed that there were a few diagonal swims on that shot. Excellent goal there by Royal College. But going back to that play, you would have noticed a few diagonal swims, which is why the outside man took his shot, Chihan, a real diversion for the goalkeeper. Yeah, and also, as I think, um, um, St. Thomas has realized that um, the Royal defense is pretty much a double mark, the prop, which leaves their center or one of the bars open. And they are continuously attacking from that open position. So either they're trying to push one of the defenders to come up and free their um, prop, or they're just going for the score. Looking for that all-important turnover at the top there. He will need to pressure. Excellent turnover. We need to pressure and then swim this one up now. Ethan's got free water in front of him. He's got his fast swimmer in Suleiman Shiha on that right wing. Excellent pass. Excellent pass there. <coughs> so Royal on the attack again. And, and you can see uh, the swimming uh, off Royal College is at a little bit of a better level. And they are very much capitalizing on that. And especially the counter attack. They know when to break. As soon as the turnover was called upon, the Royalists knew that it was, you know, break time for them. Good pressuring from the top from Royal College there to earn that turnover. So really, defence being tur turned into attack and that is what top sides will look for. Ball under called, which means you cannot submerge the ball underneath the water. Basic error there from the cap number 11 of St. Thomas's College, but also looking like that because he's tiring out Migama will may need a substitution swimming back slowly to defend that Royal College bar but they've got options on the top for a shot if they need it a little too casual there should have really made a lot of use if he was, if he watched last week's game with Yasandu De Silva in that prop position Absolutely. got into excellent positions to shoot Absolutely, and I think that was a very good pass um, from the wing, uh, but could, just couldn't capitalize on it. And joining us in the commentary box, the all-important Mr. Shanaka Amarasinga, a big warm welcome to him. And I'm sure everyone's looking forward to hearing a few words of wisdom from him this evening. Royal College with shouts of shoot.
So at under 15 level, this is really what we want the players to be looking at, looking at the clock, Shehan, making decisions for themselves, not yes. waiting for the uh, for the bench to tell them what to do because it's about building X Factor players. It's about building game sense early so that they can then represent school and Sri Lanka at the highest level. Absolutely. And then, like I mentioned before, so the game has come a long way and these players who are at under 15 level is pretty much emulating what they need to do in the under 19 or the senior level. And they do have pretty solid game plans and the awareness of um, the game has pretty much improved a long way. Yes. So at the end of the first half, Royal find themselves four goals to three. I'm sure looking back at last week's goal tally, they would have expected a little more, but seem to be playing a little more conservatively. We, uh, we, after the second half, it will tell us whether they want to turn the heat up on this Tomian defence and then unleash their swimmers to really burn out the opposition on those two wings. Beg your pardon, that was the end of the first quarter. So, Coach Ardun, Arjun De Silva, Keshan Munusinga, telling the boys, take it quarter by quarter and see if they can find a chink in this Royal College def uh, a, a defense. But to do that, you need to take the game into the last quarter. Not sure we can see a lot of their bodies, but the body language from this Royal team, Reza, very confident. And why wouldn't they be? They had a huge lead going into this second leg. But Commentators, quick, <laughs> quick turnover from uh, St. Thomas's, and they'll need to really play catch up water polo from the first whistle, in fact. Nehilash looking threatening, good ball into the prop. Unfortunate not to find the back of the net there for the cap number seven. But that left-hander was very dangerous last week. So Royal College will know not to give him a lot of space to shoot from that bar. Decision making, wasn't it, uh, Reza? Nehilash was screaming for it. Should have gotten it a little earlier from Gunavardhana. Here he is back. Royal just drawing the fouls, making sure that they don't give the way, give the ball away cheaply. Shot clock. Again, decision making. Royals Gisat Fernando should probably have just played that into the corner and swam back. We knew he didn't have a shot on goal. It's a nice ball from the goalkeeper into Gunavadana. Makes an early pass this time, probably when he didn't need to. Again, inaccuracy is letting St. Thomas's down. Two good opportunities that they've squandered, and now Royal. Through Gisat Fernando, will swim it up. Gisat Fernando, known for to be one of the faster swimmers. Stunning shot, really well taken shot coming off the left hand upright. Luckily for Pereira in the Thomian goal. 
I'm sure if Gisad Fernando doesn't burn his man on the outside there on the wing, Coach Akhtar Jaffa will be having stern words with him at the end of this quarter. Wingers expected to do a job, get that ball into the two-meter and then distribute. Really interesting to see Gunawadana made the good pass into Vikrama Singh and then just didn't advance on goal. St. Thomas has looked like they're a little bit shell-shocked from last week. Good save, really good save from Pereira that time. Oh, and the Royal player, a judge to have infringed there, going into the two-meter without the ball. Ball was in the two-meter, though, so he can attack it. Yeah. Even though the goalkeeper stopped the shot, it will still play on. Uh, Suleiman Shiha was in a position to pressure that goalkeeper. So little things to work on. Basics of goalkeeping. Secure the ball, move out of the cage. But Suleiman Shiha really should have done better there. He's got the speed on that right wing. Needed to work one-on-one -on -one with Litum Karuna Sena, looking for good dry passes and then taking accurate shots onto those corners. You'd expect these boys now to bring something extra to the game in this second leg, Gushanaka. That's why we have the two-leg encounter to see that development, see the understanding going into it. And what a wonderful job St. Thomas's College have done in that department. Cap number 11 racking up yet another goal for this blue and black team. Keeping hopes alive and keeping their fans interested. That was a good pass into Migama in the centre forward position. First time that St. Thomas's have played heads up water polo there. Just saw things unfolding and made sure they got the ball to the free man. It's a simple game, Reza. Can tend to overthink it sometimes. Yes, a good example of that was in the under 13 game where we saw natural talent, natural game sense come to the fore. And, and what a decision to start off that all-important under-13 encounter this year in the 30th edition. I'm sure it'll give rise to many talented players coming up through the system in years to come. Again, St. Thomas is just getting flustered. Rawls experience telling and that's a great shot. Fantastic shot from a very, very tight angle. Pereira was not covering his near post, wasn't forcing a really good shot. Probably one of the better goals that we've seen from these under-15 boys over the last two legs. Just looking out across the Sukhidadasa Stadium pool, seeing a lot of blue and gold flags, Reza. Not many blue and black. It's like the scoreline might have uh, deterred a few to travel in from Mount Lavinia, but it's not going to deter Dinal Vela Pili, who was outstanding in the first leg. Beautifully taken shot. Really well taken. It looks easy enough, but those are not easy shots to take when somebody's swimming on your back and you've got the goalkeeper to beat. Really well done by Vella Pili. Shades of Senit Samaranayaka, shades of Keshan Munasinghe. Good to see this kind of play at under-15 level. Dinal Vella Pili really making a name for himself in this encounter. Vikramasinghe swims the ball up for, seems to be, the umpteenth time. Gunawardana under pressure draws the foul. This is where St. Thomas's need to work off the ball. There's not a lot happening. Migama is very stationary. It's a good shot off the crossbar. Good presence of mind to get in for the rebound there. Drawing the foul nicely was uh, Pereira. Gunawardana bounces it in but just didn't have enough on it. Bounced it a little too close to the goalie. That's a good pass again from Raid Bari. Shihar, Shihar pirouetting. And he'll lob it over, but just not accurate enough. Did the right thing, Suleiman Shihar. Under pressure from two defenders, including the goalie, but just managed to get things right. That pass straight to Tehan Gunatilaka in the Royal Cap. Nice turn from Shihar. Beautifully done. And that's really, really good finishing. Belies his age, Suleiman Sheha, taken like a true striker. And really swimming circles around that cap number three for St. Thomas's College. So they need to switch up there. They know Suleiman Sheha is the danger man and a lot of distribution went through him. And Litum Karuna Sena, so the pairing...
Those are the pairs you need to break, Shanaka, if you want to stop this score line getting away from you. And they've done exactly that. Albert goes to the bench for a bit of a rest and Vasiharan comes in. It's been a timeout called by the Thomian coaches. Wanting to delay the inevitable. Because it was uh, 25 to 13 going into this. Shehan, you've been in the coaching box quite a while, played at the highest level of this game. What are you telling a team who are down on the scoreboard and down in the mouth as well? Well, Shanaka, in this situation, it's pretty much sticking to the basics and uh, capitalizing on, on the defense that Royal is doing. I think they were doing that correctly in the first quarter, but they seem to be switched off a little bit because Royal is pretty much double marking their centre forward or the prop, right? And St. Thomas's do have strong shooters on the centre and on the two bars. And whoever is free, just pass the ball and take a shot to the corner. And that should do it. Uh, pretty hard to catch up on, what, nine goals or more than nine goals at the moment. Sorry, it's about 16 goals at the moment. But I think stick to the basics, get the defence right is always my go-to game plan if we are down and e even if we are up. I would say. Well, timeout seems to have worked. It's a good shot from uh, Gunawardena. Left hander smacking it into the far corner. Nicely taken. So the timeout has paid dividends. Royal will not be in any hurry to keep playing. They'll know that this lead is F33 goals to 14. Yes, but the Royal goalkeeper never moves, Shanaka. Little things to watch out for. Oh, excellent reply there from Royal College. What a shot from the centre. Ramiro Alutge it was. And uh, Pereira in the uh, Thomian goal is going to have a long afternoon by the looks of things. And Avi in for a treat of if you can do it, I can do it better. Because that's what we've come to watch, Shanaka. No matter what school you support. Excellent water polo is what's on offer today at the Sukhadadasa. St. Thomas's College now cheered on by the Papre band playing in the background. Excellent goal there by St. Thomas's College. Migama is determined not to give up. And what an attitude to have in the pool. Well, it's important, isn't it? And they just need to get him the ball a little bit more often. Migama looks strong. He's one of the few Thomian players who can match up physically with this Royal side. He spoke last week about how physically more dominant this Royal team is. Migam is probably the only one that is posing a real threat. A push off from Lidum Karunasena there. So Pereira will have the ball. Needs to find a willing swimmer. He does find Gunawardana this time. But again, it's slow decision making from Gunawardana. Might be an exclusion, but uh, it's not a genuine mistake, according to the referees. Migama, beautiful turn. Ball just doesn't float into the goal, but uh, he did well there, and that's what he can do. They've got to give him the ball a little bit more often. Bari. Well, we'll need to tighten up on the defence. Too many times that number 11 has got easy ball into the prop, so double mark in the prop will be of essence. And as we find the same situation on the other side, Suleiman Shiha bunching there with Litham Karna Sena. Royal have got good outside shooters, Shanaka, so really spreading out the players so that the defence has to make a choice on which person to mark. It's only the second quarter and Gunawardana looks like his uh, arms have given up on him. Easy for the defender there. But he stays in the fight. Now has to find an open man, which he does. Vasi Haran straight to the goalie. Shooting under low oxygen mode. Not good decision making from both sides in the last two attacks there. But instead, Suleiman Jiha finds himself in that favoured corner. Oh, that's a good goal. That's a really well taken goal. He was patient. Turned the defender. And smashes it into the top corner of Pereira's goal. A privilege enough to have with us former Visaka captain, former Navy captain, former Sri Lanka captain, Charya Dharmadasa, who was an 
absolutely explosive specialist in that center forward position. How are you seeing those two positions playing today, Charia, in uh, for Royal and St. Thomas's? Uh, thank you, Shanika. But uh, I actually see that St. Thomas's is playing true to its uh, center forward game, which uh, Royal is not very uh, practiced in. But I think that's what St. Thomas's should be doing, continuing, because they are, seem to be getting good goals out of that. Absolutely. Migama is their key man if they can get him the ball, but seems like Suleiman Shiha is determined not to do that. Left wing screaming for the ball. Suleiman Shiha needs to have his wits about him. It's better keeping, better defending from St. Thomas's and helped out by the retreating defenders. But now St. Thomas's have to make all their players go up the pool before the shot clock expires. Pereira has no options. Needs to find... And now Vasiharan, just in front of him was the pass, needs to either milk a penalty or take a shot. Migam is not in position, but again, both players being marked there and shot clock expires. In fact, it's the quarter that's expired, has it? Turn, turn away. Litum Karunasena smashes it into Pereira's goal. You don't really realize how tall he is, Shanaka, until he really comes out of the water. Good height, good advantage to have at this under-15 level. So, really the sky is the limit for these players now. We're talking about development from this base. Using, using this game to calm those nerves, play in high-pressure situations and then deliver when it matters and all the footage I'm sure and all the lovely pictures that the Papre is bringing us will help in aiding uh, in, will aid in helping develop this sport and the players ball has been turned over once again but it's really good uh, technical skill from Karna Sena Nihilash swims in but Kisat Fernando needs to be careful how he releases that ball. As soon as it's turnover, you are not supposed to touch the ball because these international referees can be very clear on man outs and penalties. Oh, that's a great shot. An outstanding shot from Tehan Gunatilaka just doesn't find the mark. But to see an under-15 player shooting from so far out with so much power, that's... Uh, and it's changed a lot from when I was playing, Shahan, but you've been playing in the last 10 years and it's still changed a lot, hasn't it? Under-15 is having a lot more power and a lot more accuracy. Absolutely, Shanaka. I think um, skill-wise, again, I'm repeating myself, but I think these players have tremendous skill um, compared to players under-15, 10, 15 years back, I would say, and very much to do so with uh, the strength training and also the skill work that they are doing um, in, in these uh, training programs, so that has resulted in these shots being taken from 8 meters and 10 meters in under 15 level with that much power, yeah. And also I think the, the, the amount of uh, video footage that is available now to go back and watch, uh, we talk about video sessions and whiteboard sessions um, and, and that really then helps the smaller players develop themselves on the lines of um, the seniors. So good to see them watching the previous games and then trying to emulate those players at a young age. Bit of a hold up, don't know what it's for. I think Royal are waiting to take a penalty. I think the quarter was over, so they've uh, decided that the action happened after the play was over. So that brings us to the end of the first half. It's 11 goals to 6 in the second leg of the encounter for the Mind the Leonegay Trophy between Royal and St. Thomas's, the under-15 teams. Of course, on aggregate, it's uh, pretty huge. 36 goals to 16. St. Thomas is staying in the fight, but uh, not to any real degree to threaten Royal's lead. So it's been a really dominant performance from uh, from this Royal team. Charya, just coming back to international level, I think we found ourselves in these positions at international level when we are playing up against teams that are better technically, better physically, better prepared. 
So how, what do you tell a team at halftime? What would you tell yourselves if you were down on the scoreboard at this point at national level? And what do you think that these guys can do to just minimize the gap at St. Thomas's? Uh, so, going back to what Shahan said, we'll be focusing mostly on the basics right now. So, our coaches would bo uh, mostly be telling us to stick to our basics and work our game, which is mostly we've been playing a prop game, so a centre-forward game, similar to that of St. Thomas's. So, that is what our coaches will be say, uh, telling us right now, and I think for St. Thomas's to come back, that is what they need to do, and Royal, they just keep sweeping, that's their game. It's only 30 seconds on the shot clock. Uh, Reza guys who who have played under the shot clock we didn't have a shot clock when i was playing thankfully but do you think that it's maybe not enough time at under 15 level perhaps we should give five or maybe 10 seconds more yeah very interesting question so you can play this game at a 20 meter pool 25 meter pool and a 30 meter pool the under 15 game is been played in a 25 meter pool now uh, so was the under 13 game before um, so the shot clock really then is what we are trying to build these teams to play with because that will give you sense on positioning, how you play at 30 seconds, how you play at 25, 20, 15, 10 and likewise when you count down. The position for a, for a defender and attacker is different depending on the location you are in the pool as well. And that's in a sense game sense, that's what we are trying to teach them. You don't need the bench to say break now or you don't need your bench to ta say take the shot now. So if we can build these players to understand the clock, understand where they are positioning, what their role is in the team from under 13 level, the sky is the limit really for Sri Lanka water polo going forward. And uh, with a lot of Asian games, uh, highlights coming our way, it was nice to see Sri Lanka winning that gold medal. We have our sights on the 2026 Asian games and to propel this water polo team, the men's and the women's team now to compete in Asia. The Heyman is, is a huge adversary of that. Uh, the level at which we play it, which is why we get to discuss topics like this and really now push the boundaries of the national flag and the national team, um, which is, so it's a good thing to have the national team captain, captain with us, I guess, at the same time to give him this message. On the recent tour to um, Hong Kong, Shehan, for the 22nd Asia Pacific Tournament, uh, how did you find playing in the shot clock there and with the international referees? Um, <coughs> sorry. So I think um, shot clock, like 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 you mentioned, Reza, is pretty much the basic now, right? We need to have it at at the at the under 13 level, starting from because. Uh, like you said, pretty much we need to emulate what we are going to do at the senior level. That's the objective at the moment. So um, playing under the shot clock, we've been doing that for the last, I would say, 10 years in Sri Lanka. And again, one of the reasons that you see the swimming and the skill level of these junior players increasing is because they are getting accustomed to the shot clock as well. And, and you have to be that much fitter, you have to have that much skill to uh, pretty much survive under the shot clock, I would say. Another really good shot taken. Just coming off the upright, but uh, that's not a bad thing to do. It's on target still. Royal pressuring St. Thomas's goal with almost every position, which is not something that the Blue Caps are doing. Gunawadana finds the open man, but finds him too late. Nice shot, though. Albert is back after a little bit of a, re a rest. And he was free for what seemed like ages before he got past the ball and eventually took a good shot. Yes, Albert piercing the goal there with, uh, in effect, two defenders and a goalkeeper. So good shooting there from St. Thomas's College. But that's the effect of a break as well. You've got a clear mind to think about. You're, you're a little more aware of your dimensions and your legs don't give up on you when you need them the most to make that shot strength count. Nitham Karunasena could have done a little better there on that previous defence to pressure the shooter. Didn't matter. Really well taken from the outside again. Pereira is telling his defenders that he needs a little bit more help and I would agree with him. There's no pressure on the Royal shooter at that point. That's not an easy shot to execute from the awkward bar. A right-hander on the right bar. Really... 
if you've done something mischievous at practice, that's where the good shooters <laughs> usually end up. But uh, excellent shooting skill on display for you here from this under-15 team. Requires a lot of shoulder mobility to get the ball in from that angle. Reza, got to be able to shoot over your head and round arm as well. Which is what these boys have been training for, I'm sure. Again, pass straight into the defense. Into heavy traffic. So Gunavardhana has been making as many bad decisions as he has been making good ones. But that's what playing at this age is all about. Nithun Karuna Sena needs to set up on that two meter. He's too far out on the five meter and he's going to achieve very little by struggling there. Nice uh, shot there from Megama again, who has been the danger man for St. Thomas's. If ever 18 goals is going to threaten 37, then he's the danger man. Nicely taken. So again, the new rules allowing this kind of play, Shanakam. Uh, in previous years, you would have easily been able to defend that shot. And now the, the advantage is to the swimming team. So even if you are smaller in stature, if you've got your swimming up to mark, you can really compete. And that is where Sri Lanka now needs to look at in international competition, getting the swimming, the strength and conditioning up so that we can compete with the best in the world. Fernando. Oh, Ramiro Alutge it is, who's running the point. Again, nicely taken shot from uh, Dinal Vellapili. Seems to have the dexterity to take those shots from that left bar, favoured bar, the right-handed shooter. But uh, the defence is up to it this time. So the Steps team updating us. We're on to 55 goals already with the both legs, only for the under-15 encounter. Last year we spoke about 97 goals between both teams under 15 and 19, and we are look to set to we look set to break that record as we have Sri uh, Royal College swimming this one up now, looking dangerous. Good shot, nicely taken by uh, Suleiman Shiha. but uh, a penalty is ensuing. The referee did play advantage, and uh, that was Nihilesh who. Just infringed, so you can't climb on the attacker like we used to be able to maybe back in the day. It's become a very attack-focused game. Ah, bit of a head fake there, was it? Delayed shot. It needs to be an immediate shot. As soon as he started treading water and took a little time, you knew the referee was not going to allow that penalty shot. Basic mistakes which these players need to learn from fast. And St. Thomas is now will make them want to regret that mistake. Gets ever so close to the goal. Kisat Fernando doing well there to drop down. We saw Vimeen Maninga Seker in the under-19 game doing a similar defence in this third quarter. So, good to see again. Vasiran took the good shot there, Reza, but the number five who was uh, planted in the centre-forward position didn't do anything to drag those defenders away. Really not playing cohesively, St. Thomas at the moment. Just uh, trying to minimize damage. And you can go into a bit of a shell when that's the case. Beautifully taken turn and shoot that time. But again, the crossbar saving Pereira. Yes, and Ramiro Aluke just sinking on at the end of that shot, really. So needed to do a little more leg work to get those that waste out of the water. He would have had a better shot, definitely, on target. Yes, Migama. Just a little bit too much on that. Bari. Royal College looking for distribution into the centre. Lidham Karuna Sena. Nicely done by uh, Pereira in the Tomi and goal was alive to that. His uh, celebrated Tomi and father will give him a round of applause for that. Yes, Migama's goal will not stand because he dragged the ball under the water to try and get in a shooting position so the referee is very very strict on that now here's the danger man for 
Royal Suleiman Shiha to Karuna Sena. Again, penalty. Yes, it is another penalty. So, Charya, not long ago, people would be climbing all over you and, uh, you know, creating havoc. But now you would have won penalty after penalty in those situations. <laughs> That's true, actually. We had to fight quite a bit and get in front, like, uh, we had to turn and face a goal to get a man out. So now it's pretty easy, and I think so many penalties back to back. So it's amazingly in favor of the forwards. I think it might be a situation where the defense really has, has no answer to it. It's not a lot you can do. And I think they're, they're discussing whether or not the ball went in, and I think it might just have done. The goal judges are discussing it. Pereira probably knows. He's hoping to get what, the rub of the green on this one. And yes, eventually they've decided that it was a goal. And even though it was a good passage of play for the Tomian goalkeeper, on the previous attack, you saw how he nullified Litum Karna Sena, had the sense to swim out and then attack that ball. But right Bari on the other side then showing that he couldn't keep up with the same kind of pressure. So really a good positive coming out of St. Thomas's for that. And another positive again with this cap number 11 playing multiple positions now. Giving their team something to cheer about and their fans who have come out in numbers to support this team and support this sport. Well, you're counting more numbers than I am, Reza. But uh, that was a really well taken shot by Migama again. And that's the dexterity I told you about. The ability to shoot with your right hand but above your left ear. That's uh, it's a tough shot to take. Counting more numbers because we still wake up from nightmares of that last year's scoreline that I kept speaking about last week. <laughs> so blue, black and blue is all we see now when we go to sleep. Nice and uh, defensive intervention by Pereira there. Now a little bit of space opening up for Nihilesh who doesn't keep going. And now with the rules the way they are, they just need to keep swimming, don't they? Vasiharan just... Couldn't get to that ball. The ball was a little too late coming into him. Nice to see right Bari, me, Bari proving me wrong there on that play. Again, development of these players. You make the mistake on one play, but you expect them to correct it on the next. And right Bari doing just that. But St. Thomas is now looking to attack. Super pass from Pereira that time, finding Vasiharan. But unfortunately, he just couldn't put the finishing touches on that. Finally, St. Thomas says, are keeping a player up. They've got 50% of Royals goals, 38 to 19 at the moment, and they desperately need to find this fast break game. So as we've heard many times at the Royal College Sports Complex, it's wake up, Royal, wake up, because all attacks have been coming in from the Tomian side. Nicely done there by Gisak Fernando. Drew the ball under from the Tomian attacker Vasiharan and he's bearing down on goal. Defenders finally make a decision to get under him and he comes off the upright. It's good play though from him. Gesat Fernando did that all by himself. Migama now on the other end of the pool will have to do it by himself again. Nice turn by the centre forward. Beautifully taken goal. Megama has been the lone beacon of light in what has been a dark day for the Tomians so far. Shehani would have been proud of that attack. Absolutely, Shanaka. And also, Megama reminds me of Sachitra Jayatilaka for some reason. I think it's, it's uh, his style of play and also uh, a bit on the stocky side, I would say, Megama. And uh, uh, the prop position that he plays very much is similar to what Sachitra used to do uh, during his days. Uh, and, and, and his... And also the man management. So St. Thomas is just pulling him out now to give him a, a, a much needed break. We saw Zafar Zainuddin using him tactfully and masterfully in that 2016 season. The Tomian tank, as it were, bringing him when he needed the heavy artillery and then drawing two, three quick goals out of him and then giving him a rest. Really like how Arjuna Ranatunga managed Aravinda De Silva. Uh, many stories about that combination. And it's really bringing out the best in your players. So knowing who your, 
who, who is going to deliver you those goals, those X-Factor players who you need to support. And as we have Royal on attack now. <coughs> so Lehman Sheha puts yet another one in the back of this Stormy and Net. A name that, will they, that they will definitely target for next year. But they need to target the swimming angle of it as well if they want to stop this man. He is lightning quick down those wings at the Sukhudadasa. Yeah, Reza, I think the fitness level shows here. Um, the Royal is very much superior in their swimming, especially in the last um, few minutes of this third quarter. And I would say this is going to repeat in the fourth quarter as well. Royal is... So if I were me, Gamma, I'd quickly catch my breath because it looks like St. Thomas's will need him back in the pool. A quick breath in and out. St. Thomas's. Excellent shot there by the cap number three. Keeping this scoreboard ticking and keeping hopes alive for the Stormian crowd that have gathered here today. Defensive laps there by Royal College, really. Tehan Gunatilaka should have been doing, been doing better to cover that angle for his goalkeeper. You can't expect the goalie to do it all by himself. But communication then again with the defensive pairing. And St. Thomas's have definitely found... And as I going back to the skill level of the junior players, I would say, if you if you had noticed all these shots from from the left wing and the left bar, it's gone to the far corner, um, and that's a bit of a tough shot, I would say, in this level to take. Uh, I would have always gone to the shorter side, which which would have been the easy option. But these players have that much of awareness and that much of skill to aim it to the far corner with so much confidence. Albert, who's uh, had good moments on the offensive and defensive ends of the pool so far. Coming and swimming it back up. St. Thomas's need to work off the ball to try and get a player free. Got some space now. They need to take a shot. And unfortunately, Gunawadana was screaming for it in cap number eight. And what St. Thomas's don't realize is that as soon as you've double marked the prop, there's always a teammate free. They need to find that man. They're not looking for him hard enough. Litum Karunasena waits patiently until the defender's flag and bangs it into the side netting. Good play from the experienced two Royal players, Shiha and Karunasena. What do you want to do in that situation if you're a defender, Reza? Because you had two players in goal. You want to just hold your ground because they tended to cross each other there, the Thomian defender and the goalkeeper. Just really hold your line, make sure you've got to visual contact with the other player and then shut the angle down, that's all you can do and, and expect the rest of the defence to swim back to you. You don't want to be left stranded there all alone. It's a, it's a terrible feeling when, when the score line is mounting in the, in the opposition's favour. But really work in pairs, attack in pairs, defend in pairs. Not a great pass, but Shihar does well to retain it. And Pereira again swimming out and showing some bravery, attacking that ball outside the two-meter line. This is good passing from St. Thomas. It's looking more like it. Gunavardhana. Losing the ball, Migama got into a good position there. Just needed it in the right spot. And a well-taken shot just to try and end the quarter there. It's the third quarter. St. Thomas's have a mountain to climb in the fourth. It's just damage control for them now. I think this mind the Leonegay Trophy is well and truly going back to Reed Avenue. But it's about where you need the pass as well, is it, Charya? Especially when you're in that centre forward position. Migamas doesn't seem to have that understanding with his bar players as to where he wants it and when he wants it. That's something that they really need to work on. Uh, definitely for a centre forward to be playing your team, uh, play has to be on point. So when you have that right team, the right dynamic and your team would know where you want the ball, how to read you, how, what kind of prop play you're going to do. So I think here that part is, uh, you can't say much because they're under 15. So as a team they're still gelling. I think if they play together until they're under 19, they will definitely be that team that needs, knows each other really well. So I hope they keep doing that. 
Yes, and a victory there for St. Thomas's College in the third quarter. If you if you look to your screens there, thank you again to the Papre team for bringing these statistics to us. Uh, five goals to four, so another quarter to build on. And really, it's a chance to win this leg, um, Shanaka. Now you forget about everything that has gone in the past. Give it your all. This is the last quarter you will be playing for some of these players at 15 level, and then next year they go in for another challenge. But winning the quarter, that will be what both coaches will be discussing as we have the highlights package showing you those lovely shots from the bar from St. Thomas's College. And then Migama, the man of the quarter. The man who won the quarter for St. Thomas's there against Royal College. Yusuf Shiha, known for flying up that wing. And unfortunate this time for that ball just to find just ever so slightly the net. Migama again with a run, the Ranatunga light shot there from the under-19 game of last week but good turn there look at that awareness to overpower his men and then swim to the center of the pool as well knowing very well that Dinal Velipoli was on his left hand side textbook water polo wait till the goalie sinks and then take the shot Last quarter in the Mind the Lianagay Trophy game between Royal and St. Thomas's, the under 15 teams doing battle at Royal in a substantial lead as far as the aggregate is concerned. And Royal trying uh, some flashy stuff now that they know that it's just one quarter and they surely can't be caught. But St. Thomas's will do well to try and win this quarter and get close on the scoreboard in this leg. It's only 15 11 so far. Nicely done by uh, Megama. Will it float in? No, it doesn't. It is a goal, says uh, the referee. So Megama does well once again. Has been outstanding today for the Tomians. So right Bari just needs to make a decision. Does he come out to attack that ball and then secure it, or does he stay back in goal? Uh, again, conversations with his other defender, mean, meaning meaning that he needs to swim back and help his goalkeeper. Ramid Arutke looking for that shot from centre again. Looks like Royal may have talked about this a little. Let's just uh, shoot from outside. But it's 15 12, and if they take a few more of those, St. Thomas's will fancy getting close on the scoreboard. Vasi had an under pressure. Sat Fernando really defending well there. Shot clock is winding down. St. Thomas has have to get a get shot off. Royal knowing full well that the shot clock was winding down. Started breaking pretty early. Nicely taken shot. Brilliant from Suleiman Shihar. Knew exactly where the goal was. Those are not easy shots to take, Shehan. Agree, Shanaka. Again, going to that far corner is very difficult, especially when you have a man on yourself as well. Uh, very well taken. Very well taken by the Royal number 11, uh, Suleiman Zahir here. So really, Royal need to look to give the juniors a bit more playing time now if if you're comfortably leading in this encounter you've got to start thinking about the development for the next year as well it's not all about going after goal tallies and it's something that both schools I'm sure have looked into because uh, this St. Thomas's team has come back very well in this uh, second leg Vikram Singh has moved to the centre forward position now and kept asking for it but again it's too late before it goes in the Royal defence had already collapsed in to prevent Vikram Singer from getting that ball in a dangerous position. Yes, Vella Pili bearing down on goal. The defender now makes a decision. They do well. Oh, excellent by Vella Pili to wield that ball back. Good goal by the Royal no cap number 12. They are kept in the game found his way through two attackers and then had the sense to lob the goalkeeper excellent work there really this is a top quality uh, water polo really 
and a feast for the eyes for the for those fans from watching from far and away take a shot but Vikramasinghe now has turned his defender so he really needed the ball on his left side but just couldn't get it to him this is where Charya was saying that St. Thomas's need to improve that understanding of where the prop needs the ball but didn't need any help there Lidum Karunasena all he needed to do was get it within five meters of him and he was going to finish that Dinal Velipili doing all the hard work at the back of that pool, off screen, winning the turnover. And so often in these good teams, turnovers, they will make you pay on the other side with a goal. And pairing up with his captain to bring a Royal to 18 goals. But again, 30 goals, uh, Shanaka, for this encounter. So Liman Shiha burning the man on the outside. Oh, he's got the luxury of those kicks and all that strength in his arms to swim, pass now and shoot. Excellent team play by Royal College there. Showing exactly what you can do when you've got good swimmers in the pool. Idum Karna Sena putting the finishing touches there, but what wonderful passing and shooting. Not sure why Nihilash was chasing him with a head-up swim. Knew exactly where the attacker was, and Jesus needed to put his head down and sprint. So timeout has been called. Let's probably get one goal back from this. It's 44 22 on aggregate, so St. Thomas is exactly half at the moment. That won't do wonders for the confidence, but what we can take away from this game, Reza, is that this is exactly what happened last year to this Royal team. And uh, they've come back really strongly. Yes, it's the evolution of the game and the team and the players and the coaching staff. If you've made a mistake, you put your hand up and say, yes, we did, and then you correct it on the next year. So really, hats off to Royal College doing that with this junior team uh, but that's why the annual encounter is so important for the development of water polo and the sport and also building character for a young team um, they will go back they will analyze all of this and then come back with new plans new ideas and new inspiration so really the Heyman now taking on a completely different role uh, from when it was first started Thomas is opting to take this all the way back and Royal pressuring the inbounds pass but Pereira does find the right angle to give the ball to the other Pereira so that set play doesn't achieve much there and right Bari will now try to figure out how to win on the scoreboard Litum Karuna Sena with an offensive foul on that occasion used his leading arm to try and fend away the defender. It's the long limbs of Litum Karuna Sena coming to his disadvantage on that occasion, but really need to return his man in the pool. There can be no hands flailing about at the top there, <laughs> mainly for player safety. Is it fair to say the rules have uh, changed significantly, Shahan, in the last maybe couple of years to make it uh, very competitive for the attackers? Yes, Shanaka, I would say so. Because um, I think the main rule, <coughs> main two rules that I see that have changed in the last two to three years is basically uh, on, on the six meter. So earlier it was only basically you take a foul, you can either make a pass or shoot. Now you have the opportunity to play the ball on and drive in or fake and shoot, uh, do whatever that is um, suitable in that situation. And also uh, the other rule I would say is on the corner. So when you get a corner, <coughs> the only option you had earlier was just to make a pass. Now you can again play the ball on and swim in. Or even if you have uh, long limbs like uh, Royal number five, you can even attempt a shot from the corner. So those two really changes the 
uh, perception of the defense, I would say, because the defense need to be really um, uh, aware of what the attacking player, attacking team is going to do. So that makes the situation and the game very much more interesting in, those, in these two situations. Chari, I know you're a centre forward and you would love to be able to score as many goals as possible, but has it taken the competitive element out of it? Are the defenders not, not coming into the game as much? I think, uh, I'm not sure, but Chehan can uh, confirm. I think the rules, I think they made it uh, easier for smaller size players to play because it was dominated by countries like Hungary and all of them where the players were bigger. So Spain, I think, was smaller size compared to the rest of the international players, so I think they made it more convenient. So now I think that's what you're seeing more man outs going out uh, because they are in favor of uh, easy fouls. So that's um, something maybe rugby can take uh, a page out of that book. It's trying to game, make the game a little bit more accessible rather than. Uh, having six foot four Eastern Europeans beating you up. Six foot four being the average size, yes, yeah. I had the pleasure of playing against uh, a player who was just called Vlad the Russian. And they were just <laughs> Vlad the Russian, that's the, that was all he was a few elbows in the nose but but the center back position now becomes a bit almost redundant isn't it uh, Reza we used to have at the time that we were playing the game that the center back was a very specialized position where you would really go one-on-one -on -one with the prop and it would be something that players would train for it would almost be as glamorous as being a center forward being a center back but now that centre-back position loses a little bit of its relevance. Yes, so initially when we started off, you'd want your toughest, roughest, nastiest players really to take up that position. Um, but when you compete internationally, you compete with so many different countries, different uh, physicalities. And if you want the, the sport to be taken up by as many people as possible. You need to make it fair so that size is not the only determining factor to whether you score a goal or not. Skill, strength and conditioning, discipline of a player needs to come in. So really that's where the, the new rules have tweaked uh, this game and then made it more uh, inviting really I would say for a lot of new teams to take up. Uh, but having said that you the, the, the game also has uh, progressed into playing double prop positions as well because they see it as now um, more ability to score with people, with the players with a lot of sense and talent before you'd, you'd have, like I said, the tougher players who are in for a fight. But now you need guys who are tactically a little more aware and a little more sensible about how to channel that ball into the goal. Because again, it's about distributing the workload. You can't have one player giving you all the goals, all the plays. Using each of those positions at different times, if you've set up the game properly, if you've thought about the entire match beforehand, planning it out, how each, the, the workload really that each player carries. And I think that was the success to, to the Springboks winning the World Cup last year, talking about workload, because they, when you're going into championships and then playing for two, three months on the stretch, these are things that then become important to you. One thing though is it uh, allows players to conserve energy on the physical front, isn't it? Because you're not battling so much, you're not grappling as much, you're not uh, fighting those physical battles uh, as much as you would have done in the past. And now that means your swimming speed and your swimming cardiovascular fitness is what counts the most. So that's an interesting development in the game. And have you seen training change, uh, Charya, with the junior players? Are they training a little differently from what maybe you used to train? Are they doing more volume instead of swimming? Uh, in terms of swimming, uh, it was always a must for us to swim, but I think there's a lot of finance put into training now than before. And I think these guys are more focused on strength training, which we never had when, uh, 
not even when we played under 19 and that was when I played at club level that we actually had strength training so I think there's a big difference that strength brings into the standard of play here. So St. Thomas is after a much needed break. This is where they are strongest. They scored first, I think, in the last quarter as well, right after the break. Looking for the prop, looking for the bar. And as you say that the bar man gets into position, gets into the prop as well. Good sense by Dinal Velapili to double mark there. So Royal getting their men where they need them the most. Assessing the game plan from outside. So Le Manchea should be careful. St. Thomas has looked to take the ball off him. Goalkeeper will want his hands up, hands up. Too strong, too strong to Suleiman Shiha on that left hand wing. Cap number seven. He's a quality player, isn't he? Reza. So much patience. Knew exactly what was happening because Vikramasinghe was all over Karna Sena then. Nicely done as well from Vikramasinghe. Managed to take him out of the equation. So Shiha had only one option and he took it brilliantly. And even last week, we realized when he was on a fast break, before taking the shot, he looked for Karuna Sena in the middle. So showing that game sense that we speak about so highly. And again, that's why he held the shot here, just to see whether he had that additional chance to feed Karuna Sena. Might be another penalty. I'm sure Shehan must be thinking, why didn't we play in an age like this where penalties were so easy to come by? <laughs> because... In the days gone by, that would easily have not been a penalty, but just a foul or a man out at most. Mate, it's not only Shehan. <laughs> We've won water polo matches 4-2, 5-3 for the whole game. So... So this is something that the under-19s will be wary about. Um, St. Thomas's gave away a lot of penalties last week in the under-19 game, something that they must have spoken about and will not want to get onto the wrong side of the referees this today because they need Yomal Bolagala in the pool for the four quarters in this under-19 game coming up. Nicely taken goal from Vella Pili. Came up quickly, faked with his head, went to the right. So Pereira in the Domian goal will be conscious of the fact that it could be 50 if his defenders are not careful over the two legs. Right now he probably just wants the game to be over and he doesn't care but won't look good on the uh, record books eventually. Vasiharan has to make a play with the new rules. The defenders under a lot of pressure. Migama. Screams for it. Now he finds it and it's well taken. Again, Megama taking a really good quick snapshot. Just needs to get the ball into him. Give him a bit of room. And find the pass. Excellent. Have the ball. Take the shot. Basics of this under-15 game really. And Megama is someone who can really be developed into a good quality player for the future for St. Thomas's College. Another penalty probably, Vasi Haran. So again, it was a grabbing of the shooting arm, which used to be allowed and normal just a couple of years ago, but now it's a penalty, which is a very strong sanction. So it would be good for Royal to, st to change up their penalty shooters now also to distribute that experience around the bench. Cap number seven, a new attacker for Royal College taking that penalty unsuccessfully this time. He's at Fernando. But he needs to swim back now. St. Thomas is playing extra man. If they're aware of it, their right wing is free. Oh, unfortunate. No, St. Thomas's ball. Royal need to get back quickly. St. Thomas's with options on the right of that pool, left of the pool. It's an exclusion for Suleiman Shiha at that time. Vasi Haran finds the ball and uh, he had more time than he thought he did. Megama. Again, the pass into him just a little too late. 
Here's Gisat Fernando. Missed a penalty. Will want to try and make amends this time. Beautifully taken shot. He'll be happy with that. Excellent shot and also good awareness to get into the center of that uh, goal, Shanaka. He knew he had a tight angle to contend with and then just kept swimming. Shevan Ebenezer like from the 2017 game. Might have been another penalty if he didn't score that time because Vikramasinghe seemed to have grabbed his shooting arm. So it's a difficult time of it for defenders now. Gunawardhan asking for it on his left hand. Didn't play the ball in Shahan, was that it? Yes, Shanaka. I think that's what caused the turnover. Again, Suleiman right in front of the goal. The thinking was there, but the execution was not the greatest. Also, the body positioning, whatever shot you're taking, you need to be treading water coming out of, uh, of, of that pool to, to assess whether it is a lob or a shot and finish, really. Finish it well is what we keep speaking about, Jayan. Yes, and another long-range shot from the Thomians, but he really should have passed it to the left wing there. Excellent what save. save. What a save. Wonderful work from there from the St. Thomas's College goalkeeper. If there were a man of the match to select from this Stomian side, it definitely would be him. Nice work by Migama there. Vasiharan needs to find him again. They needed to play a quick one to there, Vasiharan and Migama, the 10 and 11, but unfortunately they both conspired. To give that ball away to Bari. Nice pass. No look pass. And Karuna Sena makes sure to emphasize that he scored that goal. Poor old Pereira did everything right there. And uh, he's thrown caution to the wind. He's swimming up for everything. It was a brilliant save a little while ago. Ramil Arutge really just needed to get away from his uh, defender. One foot to the right or the left there would have made a difference. When you're always in line with the defender, it's so much more difficult to shoot. So creating the angles, which is what Gishat Fernando did on the previous play where he, he took the shot from centre. So again, the Thomian player not ready for the pass. He's a left-hander, needed it a little bit closer to him. Well up, Pili. Good work for between the two experienced royal players, Velapili and Karuna Sena. So Royal College just adding insult to injury now and really making this a Heyman that they will remember for this under-15 team. Pereira in goal, his uh, dad captain St. Thomas's at basketball and Rugby, Sun has taken up water polo, Naren Pereira, and uh, we'll have a baptism of fire in his first uh, Royal Thomi, and let's see how he recovers from this, it's good player once again, really putting pressure on the Royal player, now Migama, needs to keep swimming in, needs to find the shot clock, but doesn't manage to get the last shot away. Royal agonizingly one shot of that magical 50 mark that they would have loved. St. Thomas's have scored less than half the goals that Royal have scored. And the Mahind the Leonagate trophy emphatically won by a 24 to 13 scoreline in the second leg, but a 49 to 23 scoreline in the aggregate. So why will not those Royal fans be waving their flags? 72 goals scored by both teams in this Mind the Leonage Trophy encounter and a cry of R-O-Y-A-L reverberates across the pool for the moment will they be reverberating in about an hour's time a little bit over an hour's time by the deeper voices of the under 19 team we'll have to tell you as that game unfolds you're live on the papare.com
So here are the stats of that under-15 encounter. You're at the 30th annual Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy encounter. We've just seen the conclusion of the Minded Leonegate Trophy game. Royal and uh, St. Thomas is pretty close in the first uh, two quarters, 4-3, 7-3. And then St. Thomas has ended up winning that third quarter, five goals to four. But in the last quarter, Royal running away with it, nine goals to two. And that's how it finished uh, with a considerable margin in favor of the under-15 Royalists. Watch the under-19 teams warming up. We look at the highlights. It's a nice lob pass. Karuna Sena was one of the chief destroyers for this royal team, as was this man, Suleiman Shihar. Karuna Sena again. Shihar looked for Karuna Sena, but ended up taking the shot himself, and that was really nicely done. Dilip. Well up, Pili, and this was the uh, only real fighter for St. Thomas's. Migama in the number 11 cap from the center forward position. Suleiman Shihar this time again got a little cocky that time with Pereira, and Pereira using the crossbar to good effect. Karuna Sena, this was a really good save. Stayed in the fight, young Pereira, and uh, again made himself big as big as he possibly can. But to no avail that time, Karuna Sen again, just peppering the Tomian goal. So for the statistics for this under-15 encounter, 24 goals to Royal College to 13 in this second leg. 42 shots taken from Royal College to that, 25 from St. Thomas's College. So really they need to look at that, forming the D and then taking those all important shots. And out of the 42, Royal College have scored just over 57%. So good, but again, a good scoring percentage by St. Thomas's. So really that's why you go into these stats to see where you can build a team. If you've, if you've not been on the winning side of it, then how do you improve? And if you've, if you've been on the winning side of it, how do you improve even further? But Royal College winning all four swim balls, which means they had first attack on goal. And I'm sure most of them would have turned out to be at the back of the net. Four penalties, one for Royal College, but none for St. Thomas's College. Again, a bit of swimming to do, really, Shanaka. We spoke about last year when we saw um, Akil Zuhair and uh, Diren Dias. We, we, we spoke about whether or not they would have swum all the way from Mount Lavinia to here because they were so good. And uh, things that St. Thomas's will have to work on, a lot of hard questions to be asked. But that is the, the rebuilding phase. And that is where then, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, you come back. And you come back with a big bang next year. And saves by the goalkeeper. Same seven saves from Royal College as to St. Thomas's. But really, the standout goalkeeper in this match will have to go to St. Thomas's College. Did a lot of work, had a lot of good sense about him. And I'm sure in the future, him and Migama are good building blocks for St. Thomas's to rely on. Absolutely. It's a good spine of the team. And uh, speaking about the, the shots percentage, 42 shots taken by Royal. And St. Thomas is taking uh, just over half that. So that shows exactly where Royal were dominant. They were able to get into scoring positions and shooting positions much quicker than the Tobians did. And Mahind Leonage, the man who's... Uh, trophy we are playing for when he was coaching us at under 19 Reza his mantra to me before I ever got in the pool was take 10 shots if you take 10 three or four will go I just want you to shoot and that's exactly what Royal have done and I'm sure he'd be proud at, uh, for this trophy that uh, is played in his name so we're going for a quick commercial break be back with under 19 Heyman trophy action when we come back live on the paparay.com don't go anywhere
right, make your mark. Season 1, then Season 2, Charita Avenue. Season 3, Greda Viplam. <laughs> Your milestones. Get it sizzling hot off the turf. Hear the experts break it down. Dig deep into the nitty gritty. Be inspired by their greatness. Relive all the scintillating action. Season 1, then Season 2, Charita Avenue. Season 3, Greda Viplam.
Mark. Catch the excitement real time. Be up to date with it all. Let us capture your milestone. Get it sizzling hot off the turf. Hear the experts break it down. Dig deep into the nitty gritty. Be inspired by their greatness. Relive all the scintillating action. Season 1, Denim. Season 2, Charita Valley. Season 3, Greta Hippler. Black Knight, make your mark. All right. 
make your mark. Shehan Dasanayake and Charya Dharmadas are joining us also in the commentary box. Very privileged to have uh, these two national captains joining us and telling us about how water polo has changed over the last couple of uh, years and we'll tell you a little bit more about the rules as well. So Thomas has three national players in their ranks and nine colorsmen. Royal have just one colorsman which is why that first leg scoreline is so surprising, Reza. Yes, and then that brings us to the next one. Yomal Bollagala, the real man who was tipped to take this score line in favour of St. Thomas's and, then, and close out the Heyman Trophy really in that first leg. That's what they would have expected but gave us a lot of surprises last week So, and he was capped out early in the second quarter. So really St. Thomas's will want to retain him in the pool and make sure that he is there at the end of the fourth quarter with five goals extra to his name. From some of our viewers who are just joining us, Reza, explain what capped out means perhaps. So, um, Three times if you are sent out to the sin bin, on the, after the third time you cannot play again. And you, in water polo you've got the ordinary foul, the exclusion foul and the penalty foul. Now the ordinary foul is alright, it, it's only a turnover. But the exclusion foul and the penalty foul. Any two of those, if you've got more than three of them on the third one, you cannot enter the field of play again. And that's what happened, unfortunately, to your Malbo Lagala. We were looking to see a keen contest last year, uh, uh, last week rather. But uh, I think he's bringing his A game this time. School anthems and will be starting shortly.
school and all right the are the players are ready the spectators But there will be no love lost once that whistle goes. And our two Singaporean referees have really maintained discipline in the pool. Reza bringing down foreign referees has been something that has been happening for about uh, 10 or 12 years now. And it's really added a lot of uh, glamour and uh, taken out the contra unnecessary controversy from the uh, encounter as well. Yes, and really we speak about this game being so much important now to, to really mould Sri Lanka players of the future. So good to see that the organising committee has taken necessary steps to, and decisions to improve the game and play it at the highest level because this kind of, kind of event is, is something significant in South Asia. But uh, it's all about the week between the first leg and the second leg, Sharnaka. Really... A sleepless night. This is the toughest week really in your water polo career between this first leg and the second leg. You've got to reassess what has been the result that you've got and then see as we go into the Silver, Akish Hadun Patirana and Imad Ismat. St. Thomas's Sivali Gurusinga, Talib Mansur, Nehemiah Krishnaswamy, Aidan Tisera, Migar Gurusinga, Sheran Nawaz, Yumal Bollegala, the captain, Shrestha Anthony Smithish Pereira, Senthi Kumaran, Abiru Galagoda, and Deshan Bimel. A little worrying for me, Reza, I'm seeing my friend's sons in this <laughs> starting lineups. Meets there. Nearly 19 years old, and uh, today's chief guest also, Madhuranga Kulatilaka gentleman that I'm uh, privileged to have uh, played against and was your captain. Yes, Madhuranga Kulatilaka, known for that shot from the bar and a very fast swimmer, good disciplinarian, all-round team player really, did well to get into uh, the University of Moratu as well, so showing that we have hopefully learned of books and men and learned to play the game, but uh, that is all going to be put to the test at the end of this encounter. Well, if you're going to be quoting from your school song, Reza, I think uh, the only thing that St. Thomas has showed last week was that we were harmless as the dove. But they'll have to be keen and wise like the serpent today if they want to come back into this game. It's not an insurmountable task. It's just 15 goals to 10. And it's just one good quarter, two good quarters, a couple of good turnovers, and St. Thomas's are right back in it. These are the games, these are the moments that we live for. Put your hand up when your team needs it the most. Get in the pool and do the job. You've done the training for one year. You've just got to back yourself, back your team and take that shot. Whenever the chance presents itself, find the ball in the back of that net and you've got the rest of the team to back you up. Shehan, it's been a while since you were in this position as a player and as a coach. What memories are this bringing back to you? Well, like I said, it's been a while, but every Heyman reminds me of now almost 13 years back or more than that. Uh, but I think the, the crowd is the same. It's loud as ever here. Um, taking, taking a week, taking everyone a week back, I think St. Thomas's, it was not St. Thomas's day um, last week, but there have been, I think, a few changes made in the starting line not the starting lineup but in the questions I can see um, one mistake in my opinion that the Tomians made was that Migara was put in the center forward position a lot more often than expected maybe because uh, Bollegala was pretty much out of the game since the second quarter okay here we go what an atmosphere and what a way to start off this second leg St. Thomas is winning the first swim ball, so that will be helpful for their confidence. It's always a little bit of a confidence booster to be able to win that ball. And Migara Gurusinga, who scored the first goal last week, will swim this one up. Again, St. Thomas is not having recovered from those injuries. Heavily strapped shoulders for most of the blue-capped players. 
Good pressure on the bar immediately. A double team means someone's free and it's a brilliant goal. Migara Gurusinga starting off proceedings just like he did last week. Superbly taken shot from the point position. And it's 1-0 St. Thomas's. Excellent diagonal swim there by the centre player. Carbon copy of that first play from the first leg. As soon as the ball was fed to the wing, you knew the centre was going to take off and do that diagonal swim and the shot was going to come from Migara Gurusinga. So really, Royal need to get that defence going. Randa Dranathunga will try and settle things down. Royal don't need to do anything silly. They just need to play a very sensible, safe game. Here's a left-hander managing to get the ball into the centre forward, but good defending that time. And uh, Atisha... Sorry, uh, Yasundu Di Silva, who was in the centre forward position, not able to control that ball. Here's uh, Talib Mansur. Anugahandun Patrina would have known that three defenders won Yasundu Di Silva. So St. Thomas is identifying Yasundu as an early threat, really. They wouldn't want him to get easy ball in that prop position. And instead, we have St. Thomas is on attack now, looking for another set play, I'm sure, orchestrated well in that one week of practice that they've had. They had to take the shot because the shot clock was winding down, but I thought Shrey Stansonis was a little too far to pose a threat to goal, and you need to threaten the goal from everywhere if possible. Time for St. Thomas's to unleash their shooters, Shanaka. This is the quarter where you've got to shift that momentum, put the doubt back into the opposition, and show them that really you've come to play. And the Ranatunga looking to do just that. That nervous first goal for Royal College, still elusive. So it's the Gurusinga brothers who have uh, come to St. Thomas's aid. One scoring the goal on one end and the other saving a shot at the other, the Twins. So St. Thomas is playing, slowing the pace of the, of, of the attack down. They know they've got to sustain four quarters. And if they keep doing it that, like that, it's going to be a completely different second leg here at the Sukhadasa. You can see why they missed him so much, the skipper. Yumal Bolagala. Smashing that one in with a windmill armed action. Finding the far corner of that goal. And if he can stay in the pool, the Thomians will fancy their chances. What talent for St. Thomas is to have. They surely would have missed him in those last two and a half quarters last week. So this year, this week really they would want him to stay in the pool. Four quarters. Take it down to the last play and then see where this Heyman is really headed. So a quick timeout from Royal's coaching team and we've uh, seen Yasuo Dawasarage calling for a timeout early in the piece. Why would you think he's done this Charya? Why, what do you think he's going to be saying here? I am hoping for some motivation right now but I think Royal last time also they played the same way. They actually came back after the first quarter and uh, St. Thomas is on fire for the first five. But I see a difference in the St. Thomas's team actually. They are actually they're not celebrating this time. Last time they were celebrating from the first goal, but this time they know the game is not over until the last whistle is blown. Listen, good of Yashoda Vasal to take the time out early, really control the momentum and the flow of the game. Last week he waited till three goals and then took the time out. But still, St. Thomas has went on to score another one and it was only after the fourth goal that really Royal put one back. Ranatunga now will uh, take his coaches words to heart and see what they can manufacture and it's a brilliantly taken goal and if Migara Gurusinga can do it I'm sure Dimitri Linege can do it better excellent shot there from the right bar the awkward one taking Sivigali Gurusinga by surprise I don't think he was expecting that one Shanaka from the look of it not at all Sheran Nawaz had probably his wrong hand up the left hand up he should probably have had his right hand up to help his goalie out there. Dimitri Lienage scored the last two penalties for Royal College last week, so really taking it on. Beg your pardon, behind the Katugampala. Aiden Tisara smashing it in. And we have two ex centre forwards in the commentary box. How good was that goal, Shahan? Aiden Tisara doing what he does best, turning around and shooting. I think. Those two shots taken from the top has put the pressure on the Royal defence. Now you can see uh, the people who were double marking the prop moving up a little bit, trying to block those shots from the top, which gives the centre forward a little bit more room, enough room to get the ball, turn around, either attempt a shot or actually you know, make the goal count. 
Well, Sri Lanka has lost his St. Thomas's gain. Satyata Jayatilaka on show with the Asian Games contingent. But losing out to Afghanistan, which meant that Satyata was home early and uh, was able to be doing his job as head coach, had to leave halfway through the first leg. So St. Thomas was losing their coach and their star player captain in the last encounter. So perhaps they will be a different animal this time around. Can swim this ball in under the new rules. Guru Singer finds Tisara. There's four defenders around him and he turns the ball over. Yes, so Royal on defence last week, if you look back at the footage, you will notice that they are treading back while hands up, which allows the shooters to really pinpoint shooting. But towards the, la the latter half of the quarters, Royal kept treading up and then closing the angles down, something that they need to look, up, look at early here again. Ranatunga taking the shot, but uh, the Thomian defence getting in his face. Sivali Gurusinghe will find a ball out to Talib Mansur. Yasandu De Silva well marked there and earning a turnover then in, in favour of St. Thomas's College. Looking for their bar players, looking for their sharpshooters on that 5 metre shooting zone. Yes, Shehran Nawaz taking a shot from way outside. Nawaz, of course, the son of Shamli Nawaz who was uh, the first 15 coach of St. Thomas's until yesterday. Nawaz looks strongly built, so I'm sure a lot of that raga strength and conditioning being put into his game. It's his and first year as a Heyman player though, so that experience will matter as Ranatunga takes a quick shot again. He's all arms and legs is around the Ranatunga and those long levers coming to his head. Yes, and if you watch, watch the warm-up, that's the shot that he practiced on the other side of the goal. So really, things to watch out for. You need to keep marking your players down. You've got the game footage. You've got analysts and a lot of data that is being thrown around these days, even at school level. St. Thomas should have been wary of that shot. And Aiden Tissera should have been doing better there while supporting the goalkeeper. Mansur decisively swimming in this time. Looking for... His captain, Bolagala, has an open. Sheran Nawaz asking for it, and that's a rabbit shot straight over the goalkeeper's head. And it's Migara Gurusinga once again. The danger man puts his hand up again when St. Thomas has need him the most, rocketing that ball into the back of the net and taking a quick two goal lead. St. Thomas's College have come to play and come to take this Heyman back. How hard is that shot, Charya? Just over the head of the goalkeeper. Is it something you specifically practice for? Uh, definitely, and I think it was from the wing. So he took his time, he worked it, and then he got it in. That was perfect placement of the ball. Good save from uh, Sivali Gurusinghe again. So he's been called upon a few times. Nawaz, a swimmer predominantly, so they're using him on this wing. They'll probably have a couple of players that they've rested and want to bring in later. Bolegala. Beautiful bounce. And that time, Soma Kirti, you can see his despairing sink to the bottom of the pool just for a second. You can see that grimace on his face as well. He knows that St. Thomas's have come to play today. What a goal from St. Thomas's College and what a time to find yourself at the Sukhada This is top quality water polo being played here by both schools. And really, th we are in for a treat this evening. Randa Ranatunga now who has scored both goals for Royal. As we said earlier, six goals coming from him. So three players scoring pretty much all of Royal's goals last week. So if St. Thomas's can really do a job on the Royal skipper, then they're going to have to, s to move that ball around and maybe try and get goals from other options. So Sajid Jayatilaka would probably have wised up to that. And St. Thomas's look to be driving all their attacks from the, from the left wing. Nawaz looks to be tiring a little. So if Mihin Manigasekar is quick to pick that up, he needs to outswim him now. Counter attack as soon as he takes the shot. Means on the left wing, so he's up against Talib Mansur. Uh, pushing him back into the pool, not letting him break too early. And as we say that, 
Dimitri Lienegay takes up that position on the wing. Quick to spot the gap. Needs to just swim this one in, right into that two meter zone. And look for options. Yasandu De Silva well crowded out by the Stomian defense. So St. Thomas is asking Royal to shoot from outside, which I don't think is their strength. They need to feed the prop as much as possible or go into double prop like they did last week. Expiration of the shot clock. A lot of indecision from Royal College. It's good defense from uh, the Tomians that time as well. Nawaz falling back, helping his goalie out. And uh, the bar players cutting off the angles for the pass. Here's Nawaz once again. Migara Gurusing asking for it. It's open for him. He's probably going to take this. Should, should have taken it probably a little earlier, but ops for Shrestha Anthony's. Good Mon option to distribute that ball again. St. Thomas is knowing if they take the early shot, Royal will counter attack on the other side with their wingers. So, good mature head on Migara Gurusinga to put that ball out. Whether he goes through all that thought process, we will know at the end of the, end of the leg. Skipper Bole, as he is called, had to take that shot straight into the arms of a grateful Somakirti. The left hander looking for Mihin Manigasekara. Manigasekara with three goals on the break. Not as dangerous in the D as he is on the break. So St. Thomas will know that they need to get an early lead, Reza, because as far as swimming goes, they were completely outswum last week. So it could open up. In the second and third quarters, Shahan. And also, I think Royal are missing a trick there on the right wing. They're leaving Anugahanun Patrino open and then crowding Yasandu De Silva out. Last week, Randa Ranatunga scored from that right wing. So, really, a switch up can be done. Yeah, that's true, Reza. And also, on the tournament camp, I think um, the, the goal before last, you saw Shera Nawaz. Uh, switching positions with Migara and bringing Migara right into that sweet position of between wing and the bar and creating the nice angle to score from that left uh, mid bar and mid wing position. So that's something to watch out for from the Royal Defence as well because they know, they know they're dropping down their wing defenders to the prop. So <clears throat> either we have to push uh, a strong shooter onto the wing or the wings have to make that shot. Hence the reason I think you see uh, from the awkward wing and also from the good wing, you have some shots taken from the Tomian camp. So do Royal go to plan B early in the second quarter? Put Randa Ranatunga on the wing or one of the bars because shooting from outside, like we mentioned before, is St. Thomas's strength. You can't play each team on their strengths. You've got to assess what it works for you and then execute on the plan. Well, they don't need to do anything yet, Reza, because this is exactly the score it was in last week's encounter. Five goals to two. So Thomas has start well, and I think Royal will know that. So if they can weather that storm, it's about making sure that they don't get ahead of the game. They don't try to chase the game as it is now because they know that their swimming strength is going to come back and help them in uh, the latter half of the game. So, how would you do this, Chara? You've captain school, club and national level. How do you manage to keep your entire team from just getting a little bit panicky if the other team goes into a quick lead? I think that was kind of uh, embedded in our... because we had a lot of St. Thomas's coaches that were teaching, uh, like coaching us and they would always keep, our, keep us motivated and they would calm us down and they would always and we've had so many experiences where we've come back and won the match. So based on that, taking experience through that, our team was experienced enough. But under 15 wise, it's a big learning for us. So definitely a really tough one. But the girls were, you know, they were calm. I don't know whether the boys are going to be as calm. A lot of this uh, royal crowd significantly outnumbering. I don't know whether the 155 buses are running from Mount Lavinia to Armour Street today. Isn't it pick me and Uber time now, Shanaka? I wouldn't know, uh, Reza. Royal College with first attack. They will know to get the ball into that two and three meters zone. And then Patrina now with a nice ball over the top. Just managing to get to it first was uh, Sivali Gurusinga. Timely intervention from him and then helped out by his defender as well. So 
again St. Thomas is knowing that they don't need to play fast and furious water polo Shrest Anthony we haven't seen him taking a shot on goal yet stunning goal last week nice ball into Olegala who is fouled and the ball into it this era is not a good one Here the two deadly swimmers, Hanun Pathirana and Vanika Sekhar on either side of the goal for Royal, making sure that they are incisive on those wings. Beautifully taken round down shot, equally up to the mark was Guru Singha, but just going over the crossbar there. Krishna Swami with a bad pass to Bola Gala, a hospital pass as they say. And Bola needs to get back quickly. Dimitri Lianage bearing down on goal. Will this be the goal that uh, takes Royal and lifts their confidence? Screaming for Katugam Palatras to go in, to go in and then pass. Otherwise, that's what's going to happen. Indecisiveness will lead to a turnover and then St. Thomas is scoring on the other side. He just needs to swim that one in. Are coming to grips with the moment. He is a first year player in this under 19 team. So, one thing that St. Thomas's have done differently is that they've got uh, Shrest Anthony's dropping back, making sure that he doesn't allow for those royal fast breaks. And we've seen the first exclusion of the game. Looks like it's uh, Royals Nabil Basnaika who goes to the sin bin and immediately St. Thomas has called a timeout. A set play here, Charya, you think? Or just use the extra man? Um, I think they might just use the extra man and try to take a shot from outside. As you can see, the St. Thomas's prop has been marked by, I think, three people at the moment. So they might try to force it from outside or from the wings. I think St. Thomas will want to manage the workload of the players, so give them a break somewhere in the somewhere in the half of the quarter, really, to make sure that they can keep up with Royal swimming stamina at the end of this leg. I think they've already done that. Uh, Reza Nehemiah Krishnaswamy has just come into the pool and he started last week, so they're using Nawaz, who is one of the stronger swimmers, and using him to try and keep up, make sure that Royal don't get those fast break opportunities too much. So they're going in with a double prop. So you can see that there are two centre forwards, each on the bar. Which means that there's a, a lot of space now for Guru Singh. The pass is good to Anthony's and he rabbits it in. I was just saying that Shrest Anthony's hasn't had a shot on goal. Now he does. And it's a brilliant uh, pass, a uh, brilliant shot. Again, the rabbit shot that uh, gets the better of Soma Kirti. That play from St. Thomas's College. How many times have we seen that play from the double switching to the position between the bar and the wing? Sharia Dalmadasa not in agreement because she's done it so many times, I think, to opposition teams. But really, Royal needed to do one better there. They've, they've watched all the game footage. They should have seen that play coming from a mile away. Royal going with some expansive passes across the pool. And it's an ordinary foul. Exclude you from the game for handling the ball after the whistle had gone. Royal forced into taking a snapshot because the countdown was almost over. And here's the left hander. So interesting, Nishanaka. So in St. Thomas is only one goal away from being level on aggregate. Nice swim, but they really need Nehemiah Krishnaswamy to swim in. But not that time because it was a stunning shot from Talib Mansur. Everybody expected the pass to go into Krishnaswamy, especially the goalkeeper. But that was threaded through. 
and uh, meeting with some applause in the commentary box from Jarya Dharmadasa, who's uh, scored some spectacular goals, but that was a good one. What a shot from St. Thomas's College, and what a game we're having here. We expected this. We knew St. Thomas's were going to bridge this gap at some point, and they're doing it through all their goal scorers, all the, the danger men for Royal College, putting their names up on the scoreboard again this week. So they're keeping Randa Ranatunga out of the game quite successfully. The uh, Tomian defense. And we showed you the stats at the top of the broadcast where our Papare team have helped us to identify the goal scorers. Six goals or ten goals coming from two players for Royal. So they've managed to keep those two players quiet. Here's the goal scorer, Talib Mansur. Mihin Manigasekar, not sure whether he should commit or stay with the prop. Aidan Tisara goes back. Needed the ball very quickly there, but didn't get it. Not a bad ploy from Royal College to allow Talib Mansur to swim down that wing, because, uh, to swim down the wing, I beg your pardon, because by the time he gets to that two-meter position, there's only about 12 minutes remaining on the shot clock. So good work from Mihin Vanigasekara not to foul him early at the top and then give easy ball into St. Thomas's College. Dimitri Lian again. Again, they're looking for that diagonal ball. St. Thomas is dropping back, making sure that they're just covering those angles. Quick uh, shot there taken from Nabil Basnaika, but you can see that in terms of confidence, St. Thomas has seemed to have got under the skins of the Royal East Jahan. A few shots that might not otherwise need to be taken. Absolutely. I think at the moment, the Royal attack is pretty predictable. And the uh, Thomians have caught on to that. It's always uh, shots from the outside, uh, outside top three, I would say. The wings have not even attempted to shoot. So the wings get the ball, they look out for the bar, pass it to the bar and shot. So Extra man situation for St. Thomas's College, yep. looking for their shooters. Good break for the teams to catch their breath back, but they need to be looking at the referee to see what the signal was. St. Thomas's are looking dangerous. They've definitely rattled Royal here in the second quarter. Yes, and I think the Royal is just need to calm down and go back to the basics. Just stick to the defense. Uh, defense seem to be breaking a little bit. And if you and noticed, Aiden Tissera just got into that double prop position again, so really... Royal College need to watch him. Box defense needs to be tight there on, on each of those bars to swim up and down between the double prop and the bar position. So St. Thomas is also playing their bars backwards, uh, back on the D sham. The advantage that the Thomians have in this situation is that they do have a left hand on that right wing. Um, name, name me Krishna Swami, a good shooter. So the role is really can't afford to give that awkward wing a break here. We got a good singer with the ball, a long pass to Nemia. Good positioning by the Thomian attackers. So just getting back to that play. Oh, Royal not playing ball. on the ball there. Because asking for a shot to be taken St. Thomas's this is the chance to come back level here and really put St. Royal under the pump and they do excellent stuff by Migara Gursinga nicely taken goal Aiden Tissera was wise to what happened he was screaming for the ball earlier and he didn't get it couldn't believe that he didn't get that pass but didn't matter because Gursinga came back from the result and turnover and I have to say Reza from your point of view, that wasn't great goalkeeping. No, and also a lot of confusion there in the defence. Uh, didn't really see in all the excitement why the turnover was given. But the goalkeeper definitely needed to do better there. You know the danger men. You've studied them all this week and in the months leading up to this. So as soon as he comes into that shooting zone, it is shot on. Royal now, their turn to take another timeout. It's eight goals to two. And St. Thomas has had just crept ahead on aggregate. Shehan, I uh, heard you having a bit of a go at Charya for cheering St. Thomas's with uh, so much emphasis. 
No comment, Shanaka, on that. But I think uh, this timeout is crucial for Royal just to regroup and work on their attack. Because, like I mentioned before, the attack from the Royalists has been very predictable and the Thomians are on it. Sure, Shayan would have said a lot more if he, if he was on that bench to this Royal College team. But now Royal with a chance to go to set play and then get one goal back. Now Dilbas Naika looks to be tiring out. Royal need a substitution there. Anuga Andun Patirna takes the shot. Unfortunate. Exclusion for the Royalist there. Yasendu attacking the goalie on that occasion. Unnecessary in my opinion. Looking for Bolagala or Migara. This will be St. Thomas's go-to men. Royal know it. They need to read the pass, intercept them and then break as soon as the shot is taken. That's Extra interesting. Man. Penalty being called there, so Royal down two players. St. Thomas is with the power play. Well, we have one player back, so Royal will have just one player down. And uh, terrible execution there from St. Thomas's. Just not get him able to get the shot away. Excellent work from Yasundar De Silva. As soon as he was out of that sin bin, looking for his man, pinpointing him on defence and then earning a, a turnover. And now Yasundar De Silva with ball in front of him. What a response. Swam straight from the exclusion box right down to the other end of the pool. A superb pass just in front of him. Guru Singh uh, made a half a decision to go for it and then decided not to. And now we are tied on aggregate. This is going to be a nail-biting finish. I can sense it now. Mean Manika Sekar, the speedster on that left wing. Came into the game really in the second, in the third and the fourth quarter last week as well. So St. Thomas's will be wary of him. And as we have turnover ball again. Two terrible passes into Aiden Tesara there. Two turnovers for St. Thomas's in very good positions. And this is exactly what they did last week as well. And now Ramda Ranatunga is bearing down on goal and he needs the pass to come in from Hamdun Patirana. Royal playing extra man if they heard the whistle before. Need to settle the D down and take a good shot on percentage from outside. Again, good defence on Ramda Ranatunga. So, St. Thomas has identified the danger. They've seen that round arm shot and they know exactly where the release is coming. So, you've had a player open on that left wing, Reza, but... Not going to him. Set play for Royal College. Randa Ranatunga on that uh, double prop position where he scored from last week. Nadil Basnaika not spotting the free man. These mistakes will hurt Royal dearly. And if St. Thomas's really want, want to rub salt in their wounds, they need to score now. The Thomian crowd has found a little bit of its voice, which was embarrassingly absent before the start of the game. A long pass, so... In fact, it was an attempt on goal because the quarter is just coming to an end. It's eight goals to three, so a five-goal lead for St. Thomas's, which means they have cut the deficit and are even on the scoreboard. So this is going to be an exciting and terrifying halftime conversation. So you're watching at home. If you're a Thomian fan and decided not to make the trip because it might rain, because you had to watch the cricket, well, that's your loss. Might have missed a stunning comeback. First quarter, five goals to two, exactly the same scoreline as it was in the first leg. And three goals to one in the uh, second quarter as well. But that was a much, much closer, grittier quarter, wasn't it, Reza? Yes, a lot of nerves, a lot of pressure on the coaching staff as well. Third quarter is the pivotal quarter. This is where then if Royal play like they did last week, we'll come back into the game. 
but St. Thomas's look a lot more settled. They know exactly where to shoot from. They've got their their strong shooters positioned in prime locations to make ample use of every opportunity to score, and that is why they have bridged this gap come the first half of this game. As we have in Vanika Sekar assuming that one up and then shooting. Adil Basnaik is shooting from far, but if you saw the double prop was open, his captain will have strong words with him in this half. And just as the players take a little break, and we in the commentary box will go in for commercial breaks and see you on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Sukhothadasa Stadium pool as night falls on the pool side. Light is slowly dawning in the eyes of the Thomian supporters as their team has clawed back to even Stevens on the scoreboard. 18 all on aggregate. The Thomians have a five goal lead in the second leg of the 30th annual Dr. R. L. Heyman trophy for water polo between the two schools, the traditional rivals, Royal and St. Thomas's. St. Thomas is in the blue caps and Royal in their traditional blue and gold. You're watching us live on the Papare from wherever you are in the world. Our chief guest today, Maduranga Kulutilaka, will be desperate to give the Heyman away to a Royal captain. So you're wondering why that wasn't a penalty. It's because he hasn't turned to face the goal. You have to get yourself in a shooting or scoring position to, in order to put the defender under pressure. And also he was somewhere in the three or the four meter with two defenders on him. So really advantage was to the defending team there. Mansoor not able to collect that ball. Again, three really good attacking opportunities, really squandered by St. Thomas's. So, might be the fatigue hitting them again. It's an area where Royal will want to capitalize on and be a little patient. Royal wouldn't care if they lose the leg but win the hammer. Again, the third block, the third successive block. On run the Ranatunga, but they'll get the ball back, Royal. And the skipper will try again. Shreshta Anthony's with another block. And the rule changed a few years ago that even if it goes off one of the outfield players, it's not a corner ball. As if the attacking team didn't have enough <laughs> advantage now with the new rules. But. Uh well, that yes. does help the defenders, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Reza Bollagala, who hasn't had a shot on goal since that first quarter. So also, with the rule change, you are you are um, expected to do a lot more treading water and be able to defend in zones. So, when you're changing the rules uh, to suit the flow of play, I think you need to be fair on both the attack and the defense. Nawaz gives the ball away to the Royal Defender 
And Soma Kirti now will look for a long ball, but there has been an infringement of the ball. Yes, Soma Kirti had many good long passes last week, which resulted in three goals in those last two quarters. So Adun Roy Padira. will need him to come to his come into his own here in this dying moments. Adun Patrana's pass was just a little bit behind the shooter. So he wasn't able to get a good snap away. Gurusinga will slow it down. Knows that they don't need to do too much. Just need to play sensible water polo. And this time it's Nehemiah Krishnaswamy. The left-hander, Aiden Tisara, has uh, three defenders around him, which means somebody's free. And now they've found him. Ball coming into Aiden Tisara. Good shot. And this time they were expecting the backhand shot. So Somakirti manages to save it. You can cut the tension with a knife, uh, Shanaka. Everyone's on edge. You can see it on the faces of the players, the goalkeepers, the fans. This is this game can go either way. And Royal really to settle the nerves need to go to a set plan and shoot. Good pick up and shoot from in Monica Sekara, but he needs to be on his wing. Playing out of position will not help in high pressure situations. Yasandra De Silva has found himself in the prop, but not had I think maybe one or two balls fed to him. Up well, to I, now. I think we need to doff the hat to Shrest Anthony as Aiden Tisara makes a carbon copy of the previous shot right into the face of Soma Kirti. And uh, even in the last leg, Aiden Tisara was fed a lot more ball than Yasondo De Silva into that prop position. Royal College swimming this one up, looking for a shot. <laughs> pressure, 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 pressure telling on Dimitri Lianage. That's why we needed Mihin Manika Sekar on that wing. We spoke about it before. He converted most of those into goals last week. Talib Mansur look for Aiden Tisara. No, he, no, he doesn't. Mansur's decision making on this right wing has been questionable to say the least. Aiden Tisara is getting service, but he's getting terrible service. If it was a restaurant, he'd walk out. Uh, Anuka Handun Patrina, the smallest man on the field, taking it upon himself to break and will look for Yasandu De Silva. But someone needs to get into that prop. Yasandu is playing out of position. Indecision from Royal College. The time running down on the shot clock. Five seconds left, four seconds left. Good try by Yasandu De Silva. I was saying earlier that we need to take our hat off to Shrest Anthony's. We were talking during the under-15 game that the centre-back role has probably reduced in relevance and the centre-back doesn't need to be as much of a specialist. But I think Anthony's has done a superb job to prevent Yasundi De Silva getting the ball, muscling him out of position and making sure he can't turn and face his uh, passes. And traditionally, St. Thomas has been very good at defending the prop position as well, Shanaka. I know they did a, an excellent job with Savindar De Sanayaka when he was playing in prop it's all about positioning reducing the angles pressuring the shot and then if they take a good shot then so be it but the workload that you have to put in in that position is immense Royal now looking for that goal to just put them into the lead Aiden Tisara gives away another exclusion so he will be on two exclusions if I'm not mistaken Good distribution, good ball in. Royal College had 13 seconds remaining on that shot clock at the time the shot was taken. So really, one extra pass would have done the trick. Thomian defense has really got their angles right this time. They've known where the upright was. And Nehemiah Krishnaswamy, the lefty, will have to find a shot. Manages to get an exclusion. Good work from Dimitri Lienage, kept swimming with his man and got his head in front of the attacker before defending that one. Otherwise, it would have been a clear penalty. So good to see the technicalities of the game being adhered to and trained and perfected at game time. Nice ball from uh, Soma Kirti and this is the man that they need to come to the party. Mihin Vanigasekara with that short arm swim and he gets the goal. 
Oh, right. all the fist pump in the stands. Min Manikasekara, we spoke about him so many times. And if Shehan Dasanayka would have had it any other way, would have put a cap on and got into that wing position if he needed to. Because that is what Royal needed to do. Give them shooting men chance with the ball. So this is where the swimming is going to come into focus in this crucial, crucial third quarter. That's the goal that cuts the lead. That's what gives Royal the lead on aggregate. That's what gives them one hand on the Heyman. And Mihin Wanigaseka are coming through when the chips were down. Yes, Royal blessed really with fast swimmers, but St. Thomas is tactically outmaneuvering them and nullifying all that swimming strength that they have. But if Royal keep getting turnovers like this and we know the Somakirti distributes up the pool, then it's going to be a different game come the fourth quarter. Anugahanun Fatirana looking for options. He's got options in the center. Yasandu De Silva quick to set on the two meter. They need to feed him the ball. And to his rescue is Randa Ranatunga. Can swim this, can go right in and take the shot. He's got enough time. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Shoot is the call. Nice deflection again from uh, Bolagala, who's doing his job on the defensive end today. They'll need a couple of goals from Indos and Thomases if they are going to win this encounter. But uh, it has been pretty shocking, the service in to the center forward, Charia. You've been uh, face palming here because Aiden Tissera and Talib Mansur have got some terrible passes into them. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the uh, props here are not using like skill basically. They are trying to use their, the size of their body and play the game. But they're not using fast moves to, for the for the rebounds and things like that. So I think it's really important that as props that they practice on that and that is something that we've been practicing with our teams. Wonderful awareness from Migara Guru Singh to make every to, to take every opportunity shows a lot of sense and so, shows a lot of skill. He's a lot more stern this time with his facial expressions as opposed to last week which is which is showing really and that is why St. Thomas has find themselves in the lead. I think Charya hit the nail on the head early on when she said that St. Thomas was celebrating like they'd already won the Heyman in the first quarter of the first leg. And uh, they were given a rude wake-up call from this brave Royal team. Ran Ranatunga will look for the shot and again it's over. So you can see the captain is trying hard. Is he trying too hard at the moment? Does he think that all the goals have to come from him? This St. Thomas's defense is too good, really, Sharnaka. We, we, we speak about it at practice so many times. You need to distribute that ball. Shooting from the bar or center on a set defense will not work most of the time. And in high-pressure situations, you've got Mihin Maniga Segre, you've got Yashandu De Silva, you've got Dimitri Lienage. Distribute the ball amongst them so that the goalkeeper needs to keep guessing, which is what St. Thomas is doing now. Looking for the man in the center. Turnover ball given. Last 10 seconds in the quarter. Royal College know it. Two quick passes can do the trick. And instead they, they opt to run the shot clock down. Take the shot. They say he's got options. So the clock just running out on uh, Royal there. And a shot just getting one shot away in that end of the third quarter might have made all the difference. But we're coming down into the fourth quarter of this game with absolutely nothing in it on aggregate. St. Thomas's have been a completely different team to what they were. An attitudinal shift and maybe having their skipper in the pool and their coach on the bench have transformed them. But this is turning out to be one of the classic Shahan. Absolutely, Shanaka. From the Royal Camp, I think uh, they're making too many mistakes on the attack. They, they are doing the hard work of getting those exclusions, but really not using their 20 seconds and also just taking quick shots has not worked. I think they need to pass the ball around, tire Migara and the defense, uh, sorry, tire Sibali and the defense uh, out a little bit and then attempt that shot. Uh, too many shots have come from the top, I would feel. Use those wings, use the other players a little bit more. Like you said, Randa doesn't have to take all the shots in the world. If we can pass the ball around a little bit more, I think we can see some penetrations on that defense. Listen, what a game we are having here. Really bringing it down to the last quarter, keeping all of us entertained over these last two weeks of water polo. As we have run the run, run, run to go coming out of that goal and trying to make, make a, 
a goal out of it, but well done by Megara Grosinga there. See, Billy Grosinga, I beg your pardon. Saved that one for St. Thomas's College. Hidden Tissera being fed a lot of ball, which Royal couldn't do in that third quarter. Whenever he got the ball, had two men on him, which made it even more difficult to score. And then Main Manika Sekara coming to Royals rescue when they needed him the most to give them some hope then. And what a shot from Megara Gosinga there. Really showing the strength and conditioning that you need to play this game at a high level. I need to remind everyone of 2017 and 2018 where we won the Heyman in the last 20 seconds. St. Thomas's drew the Heyman in 2017 under Manula Vikramasinghe's lob which came in the dying seconds of the fourth quarter. And again, we were entertained two weeks of water polo there, which kept us on edge. And in 2018, when Akinu Hanun Patirana, the elder brother of Anuga Hanun Patirana, playing this encounter here, lobbed from the right wing to bring the Heyman back to Royal College. And I think we're in for none other than another spectacular showdown here at the Sukhada Dasa today. Nothing in it. We've been waiting a week. And we're finally at... The last stanza of this 30th annual Dr. Ariel Heyman Trophy encounter. It's an encounter that has never flagged for entertainment from its first encounter in 1993. And Ramda Ranatunga now shows some determination to win the first swim ball for Royal. And he will lead his team, which has much skill determination and courage as he can again the passing is a little inaccurate from both teams into the center forward and you have to say that the defense on the center forward has been excellent if the game ends now Reza I'm going to pick Shrestha Anthony's as the best player for St. Thomas's in this leg because he has completely kept Yasundu de Silva quiet Vinuda Somakirti looks a bit bewildered. Is it a goal? Is it not? Right. So Royal need to be double teaming that prop really. Exactly what St. Thomas's were doing to Yasandu De Silva. So I don't think the goal stands. That goal didn't stand, so it's still a five-goal margin, and we're tied on aggregate. Andun oh. Patirana with the round arm. We said he can shoot. We said he can shoot, and now he proves us right. What a time to come up. Anugo Andun Patirana repeating works of that 2018 game that we spoke about very shortly. But it's not over yet. St. Thomas's are still in the advancement. They've got the crowd behind them, they've got the momentum behind them, and also they've got more, score, uh, more goals behind them, Shanaka. That round arm completely deceiving the goalkeeper. Gurusinga didn't know what to expect. And that ball just kidding off the water. Talib Mansur looks to find the ball into Gurusinga, and he restores the Tomian lead. Ranatunga if, looking like he's a beaten man at the moment in that centre-back position. And if Royal keep playing one-on-one -on -one with that uh, prop, it's going to be one goal after the other on the St. Thomas's side. Spoke about double-teaming him. Bad lapse of concentration from this Royal College team. This is the time to take the time out if they need it. Ranatunga, the skipper, with ball in hand at the moment. Looking for Dimitri Lianage and now... Looking to attack through the left side of the pool and then swinging it right across. And that pass has run down a little bit of time on the shot clock. Yasandu De Silva, the ball into him was the correct idea, but the execution wasn't great. So St. Thomas is using Aiden Tisara and Vigara Gurusinghe in the center forward position, Charya. Who would you go with for the um, next couple of games? Would you stick with this center forward or you go back to Aiden? I think I'm going to stick with this centre forward because this is what, what my coaches have taught me. When you can see and face the goal, your shots are more accurate and that guy is doing the same thing and I think he should keep doing it. 
And good early calling as well from Mikhail Guru Singh. He was open and screamed for a ball, but as soon as he knew he was double teamed, gave a quick no to the passer. So good communication there as well in high pressure situations. But this is now where Royal Strength is swimming that ball up the, the left channel on that wing. Might be the first occasion in the history of the Heyman that Atomi and Prop has said they don't want the ball. Royal going into double prop. This is where they need to distribute. Seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. Good recovery from uh, Sivali Gurusinghe there. Good Royal pressure as well from Yasandu De Silva on that goalkeeper. If he didn't have a defend on him, he may have looked for the ball under option with the goalkeeper. You've got to take your hat off to the Thomian coaching as well. They've responded well to what happened last week. And they've played the safety down. Shreft Anthony's has been absent from the attack almost. Uh, it's not the correct option there because the winger was free on the left side. St. Thomas's need to make sure that they don't go into this last couple of minutes with a tie. Shooting from outside will not help. It will hurt you. It will hurt you badly. And it does this time. St. Thomas's with a man out. Yasandu De Silva is in his position to score. Anugandun Patrina as well. Randa Ranatunga coming in. Excellent save by the goalkeeper there. Oh, excellent goal by Royal College to come back. Yasandu De Silva puts his name on the score sheet when it matters the most. Excellent look for the rebound there. We, we talk about looking for opportunities in front of the goal. What a shot from Royal College. That was a brilliant recovery from Yasandu De Silva. We spoke about he had been, how he had been quiet. And just as Shrest Anthony goes to the bin, Yasandu De Silva comes to the party. Is that the goal that changes the game? was a long shot from before uh, Shanaka. We said every time you shoot from out wide, if you don't make it, it will make it, they will make you hurt on the other side. Four minutes to go. Royal leading by the thinnest of margins, just one goal. St. Thomas's will look for Bolagala now. Look for Migara Gurusinga. Those X Factor players that we've been speaking about on the bar to give us that enthralling and thrilling goal from outside. Nehemiah looking for Migara again in the center pocket. Good defense this time by Royal College. That time again, the pass was into traffic. So Guru Singh had three men all around him. Exclusion coming. Royal College know this. Swim up the right wing behind the Kandukam. Puller looks tired, needs to distribute. And Royal need to sub him, really. He's slowing up the attack on that right wing. Randa Ranatunga can't do it all by himself. He's got the other wing. He's got the other wing. Mean Maniga Sekara needs to be clear, close on that shot. Turnover ball coming up for Royal College. Another 20 seconds on the clock. Settle the shot down. Settle the D down. Look for Yasandu De Silva. But really, Randa Ranatunga is the man to go to. Yasandu De Silva has got ball in front of him. Looking for the... Oh. Good defense and good refereeing. Allowing the game to flow. Tight situations. Oh, what a ball. What a ball in to this Tomian cap number three. Excellent defense there by Royal College. Dimitri Lienage did it last week as well. Nehemiah Krishnaswamy watching that fast break. Excellent defense by Royal. Manika Sekara will want to be on the Tomian half of the pool. Will want to be the man that finishes it off. Anuga Handun Patrina switch positions with Dimitri Lienage. Again. They're not going to score from out there. The props are well marked. Royal need to go into double prop positions if they need to score. But good lob. So smart play from Vanika Sekhara just running down that short clock there. Stressed Anthony's has to go back to Sivali Gurusinga. And now Gurusinga with the long ball to his keeper. Bolagala has taken only a couple of shots on goal. And will look for... An attacking option, Aiden Tisara swimming towards the goal, but well done to Royal for getting back quickly. That's Yasandu De Silva with some really timely interventions, putting his captain in space. Randa Radatunga, you can hear the Royal crowd willing him on. Talib Mansur, Shrest Anthony, stand between him and what could be a decisive goal. Here it comes, and it comes off the bar. Oh my goodness, you couldn't write this script. If you sat down and learned how to write a thriller, beautiful work from Yumal Bollagala. Bollagala now bearing down on the other end of the goal. 
Can the skipper finish it? No, he doesn't need to because Aiden Thissera will do it for him. Aiden Thissera, the senior sacristan of St. Thomas's College, must have said a few prayers in the chapel. And he has been answered. What a game, what a game. We're having the royal crowd stunned into silence. And then this blue and black brigade, the Tomian Legion, finding their voice. They know they are in the lead now. Royal College missed a golden opportunity in front of goal. And Yumal Bolagala coming to the party, but really he needs to be on that bar, Shanaka. He needs to be in his scoring positions if he wants to take this for him and back to Mount Lavinia. Royal College swimming this one up. Hindu Kandukampala tired. Spoke about it before. Royal need a substitution there. Mean Manika Sekara distributing the ball. Good use of the shot clock. St. Thomas's defense have really stood like a wall today. They've forced Royal to shoot from outside. They haven't allowed those fast breaks. And if uh, they miss Sachita Jayatilaka last week, they really welcomed him back. The tactical play has been very good. They've deployed people in the correct positions. And although they've thrown the ball away on offense a few times, it has kept them in the game. Mansoor will be asking for it. Nehemiah Krishnaswamy also asking for it. This is the last minute of the Heyman. This is the long pass to Royal College. This is Royal College. Two yellow caps on one Tomian defender. Needs to be a goal to, for Royal College. Excellent save by St. Thomas's. What a game we're having here. What a, what a response by this Tomian defense. Such as the Dalzilika, if it were making the difference, and Yomal Bolagala in the pool, giving this Tomian defense now all the courage they need to stand up to this Tomian winger, uh, to these Royal College wingers, and all the pace they have behind them. But Royal College, with 20 seconds again, set play time. Randa Ranatunga needs to get into a double prop. Instead, feeds Yasanto de Silva. Excellent goal, goal by Yasanto de Silva to bring it back to the Reed Avenue boys, and they find their voice again. What a shot, what a game we're having. The first time he's been able to get his body free, to get his hands free in this game. And it is the absolute decisive moment in the game. Royal are going to win this one 22-21 if it stays like this. But St. Thomas has have one more opportunity to try and draw this game, which if they do, they will retain the Heyman. Thank you to both schools. Thank you to both coaches and the players for putting on such... Such a spectacle, Shanaka. I mean, you, you, you do not have this kind of entertainment even if you were abroad at some point watching a World Cup because this is our World Cup. This is our team and this is our Heyman. It's the last 30 seconds. It's the last play of the game. St. Thomas has have the ball. You could not have asked for anything more nail-biting. If you opted to stay at home today thinking that Royal had won this at a canter, then the joke's on you because this has been an absolutely fantastic encounter. Royal have never gone away. Spoke about Michael Jordan in his last shot, taking, taking it. Everyone knew Michael Jordan was the man to make the shot for those Chicago Bulls when they went for the six-peat. And this time, it is definitely going to be Yomal Bolagala or Migara Gurusinghe. No one else is going to get this ball, Shanaka. Royal need to be wary on this defense. Because if it is tied, as it were, Royal at the moment are in the lead by one goal. But if it is tied, then St. Thomas has take the trophy back. Shahan, do you have any insight into what the referees might be discussing here? I believe they're questioning that last goal, whether, whether um, Yasindo, I think, was whether he was holding on to the defender there while turning him. I believe that's what's being discussed at the moment. Let's watch it here. Number 11. That's who you've got to see. There seemed like there was a bit of a an elbow as well. But I'm wearing my blue and black glasses there. They're not going to see the replay. But the goal looks like it will stand. And in those blue and black glasses, I can see Sri Lanka colors in the future, uh, Shanaka. 2026 Asian Games. That they will
Well, looks like the referee saw what I did. There was an offensive foul there, a foul that would not have been called two years ago, three years ago. And St. Thomas is now have an opportunity to win the Heyman outright. Or will they turn the ball over and will Yasan De Silva get another chance to redeem himself? Shrestha Anthony has done such a good job on Yasan De Silva today that the referees have been seeing that. They've been seeing exactly what he's been doing. And perhaps that has informed them that if Yasan De Silva did get free, he must have done something. This is how uh, referees think. And as a centre back, that is uh, really a defining moment in Shrestha Anthony's contribution to this game. The aggregate is 21, Charya. What do you do? You, do you just run the clock down or do you take a shot on goal? I think I'm going to attempt for a shot now. I think usually what they do is they come to the half when the goalie will make the pass, they'll make the D and they will try to attempt a shot here now. 2017 was the highest draw we had where Basit Yakub's team came back from four goals down to draw the Heyman. And this year, let's see what this St. Thomas's team has got in store for us. Talib Mansur with the ball. Gives it to Nehemiah Krishnaswamy, who hasn't had a great game. Mansoor needs to shoot, but not so early. Mansoor has shot maybe five seconds too early. Five seconds remaining. Rohit need to take the shot now. Take the shot now. Oh, he's running out of time. Excellent save by the St. Thomas's goalkeeper. Excellent work by both teams. What a, what a game we've had here. What wonderful scenes at the Sukhothasa Stadium. Sivali Gurisinga is beside himself with joy, as are the entire Thomian team and the entire Thomian supporters. I have never seen a royal crowd this quiet in all my years of playing against royal and watching royal Thomians. My goodness, this has been a comeback from the brink. And it has been such an exciting game, a decisive goal disallowed from Yasan De Silva just seconds ago. And even though Talib Mansur might have put Sivali Gurusinger's heart in his mouth just for a few seconds. It was enough to do the job. And the hooter came to the aid of the Tobian team, saved by the bell. And both sets of supporters seem like they just cannot believe what they've seen. He said it was a game of seconds and a game of goals. Shanaka last week, Royal College made one mistake where Migara Gurusinga got one goal back in the dying seconds of the last quarter last week. But that is history now. St. Thomas's take the Heyman, Dr. R.L. Heyman trophy back to Mount Lavinia. And what a game and what an occasion that they've chosen to do it in, a, in front of a packed stadium at the Sukhadasa. St. Thomas's College are the champions of this Heyman trophy. But take nothing back from Royal College. They've put their heart and soul into it and really set the stage for next year and the next better players to come. Cayman ending up in 2023 on a 21-21 aggregate draw for this encounter but St. Thomas's will retain that all important tro trophy and won't they be singing Hall of Fame to the end of the night Sh uh, Shayan? Absolutely Reza, what a game um, St. Thomas's did really play their hearts out in this leg Royal did have that opportunity in that last five seconds to take it back home but uh, that's the that's beauty of the game that's, that's part and parcel the Heyman stays at St. Thomas's for this year. Yes, and really good work from Royal College to come back from that drubbing last year. A lot was expected from this Thomian team and many surprises in that first leg when Royal went away with five goals, with a five goal lead. Because we have the stats from that, from the first quarter. So St. Thomas is setting their benchmark early. Five goals to two in the first quarter and then three goals to one. So Royal College never really won the quarter. They ended up tying the third quarter one all and the fourth quarter two all. But how much will be said of that Yasaldo de Silva goal that was disallowed in the last play of the Royal attack?
moments to remember, moments to talk about in future. But really, these sets of boys have found worthy adversaries in each other. And we look to them to take the Sri Lanka flag long and high in the 2026 Asian Games. Two times score. Six goals to St. Thomas's College. Uh, six goals to Royal College. To 11 from St. Thomas's Royal College. Guilty of a few easy shots into that drop, but Anuga Hadupatana pulling that one out of the bag wonderfully from that right wing. And Miguel Gorsinger, the man who made the difference in that first leg and now in the second leg. And his brother, Sibali Gorsinger, again. Sibali had many good stops on goal last week. More than that of the Royal goalkeeper and ended up stopping two penalties as well. So really, I think he made the difference this year as well. That wasn't enough of a difference, the last goal. Another save by the Togian goalkeeper, but what a powerhouse they found in Yasanda De Silva. He will be there, better next year, bigger, stronger, more determined. This was the shot, this was the shot. That's even if you know when he knew the job was done. Two years work done, that was all two years work. The emotion and the heartache and the tears all celebrated by this Indian team. And should be celebrated by this Royal team as well for giving us such a performance and taking the game to the last seconds in the second leg. And as we have the stats for the second leg, Royal College six goals to St. Thomas's, 11 goals, 35 goals on target. Uh, with a 17% shooting average, which means the goalkeeping and the defense really was tightened up by St. Thomas's College. Uh, St. Thomas's on the other hand had 21 goals, uh, shots taken, and 52% of them, which is a high scoring rate. Three, uh, three swim balls, one to Royal College, showing their swimming strength, one to St. Thomas's College. No penalties at all this week, so really the coaches having done a lot of work on the whiteboard sessions and the match footage to make sure that there was no easy penalties given. And saves by goalkeeper, that is the telling sign. St. Thomas's 7, Royal College 4. When it needed them, when they needed the Guru Singers the most, they stepped up to the plate and they have won this Dr. R. L. Heyman trophy back to St. Thomas's College. So to give everyone of you at home a break and us in the commentary panel, we will go into a short commercial break and we'll be back with you live for the presentation ceremony. Don't go anywhere. This has been a humdinger of a Heyman encounter in 2023. Season 1, Danuma. Season 2, Charita Avalia. Season 3, Krida Viplava.
website, make your mark. Season 1, Denuma. Season 2, Charita Avelia. Season 3, Krida Viplab. real time be up to date with it all let us capture your milestones get it sizzling hot off the turf hear the experts break it down dig deep into the nitty-gritty be inspired by their greatness relive all the scintillating action Along with 
the head of marketing of Fondre, our main sponsor, Mrs. Nadisha Chandra Sekara. And also Mr. Senagatha Korala, the secretary of the group of 1992. Right, so we have uh, quite a lineup with the under 13 games also coming into play this year at the 30th Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy. First up to felicitate and award the under 13 teams, let me invite the head of marketing of Fondre, our main sponsor, Mrs. Nadisha Chandrasekhar, to step in front, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we first start off with the runners up medal. The runners up would be St. Thomas's College. Let me call you to invite the team AY De Simon, IAAA Pereira. NT Selaheva, TNA Piris, TMAL Tenakon, S Rifai, LH Pushma Vansa, DMA Badiga Surya, KK Vasiharan, LAKR Pereira, N Nilavandan, and A Sundaresan. Now the winners, ladies and gentlemen, of the under-13 Royal Tomion game, Royal College. The captain, Dirk Rodrigo. Sorry, I made a mistake. It is under-13 teams have not appointed captains. The players, Dilik Rodrigo, Idris Zuhri, Yahya Farhan, Shakya Vikramasinghe, Chesat Kinavinna, Tasit Lianage, Dawood Safin, Janek Piris, Susit Lienage, Isuko Amara Singha, Ayan Azim, Abdul Karim, and Muhammad Maznavi. The Royal College team won the first leg 14 to 3 and won the second leg 9 goals to 5. And with aggregate of 24, 23 to 8, it is the Royal College under 13 team walking away with the Royal Tomian Trophy awarded for the first time. Here we have the Royal team coming on stage, the under 13 team to collect the Royal Tomian Trophy from Mrs. Nadisha Chandra Sekara. Congratulations to the Royal College Under 13 team and of course great job done both the teams Under 13 boys kicking off the Under 13 game here at the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy. Thank you to Mrs. Nadisha Chandra Sekhar, the head of marketing of Fondre for presenting the medals and the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to the Under 15 category and first to present the runner-up medals, let me cordially invite the sub warden of St. Thomas's College, Mr. Asanka Pereira. Under 15, runners up, St. Thomas's College. D.E. Pereira. I.A.A.G. Pereira. I.S. Albert. By Udabage. T.J. Vikramasinghe. K.G.A.R. Pereira. G. Nihilash, M. J. A. Gunavardana, I. D. L. Fernando, J. J. Vasiharan, S. D. Migama, M. M. Godavitanagi, and A. Y. Disiman.
Thank you to the subordinate of St. Thomas's College, Mr. Asanka Pereira, and now to present. And now to present the gold medals for the champions and the champions trophy, let me invite the principal of Royal College, Mr. Tilak Batuheva. There's a request to the players when you queue up for the medals, don't queue up very close so the picture will look a bit jumbled. Have a bit of a distance from the person wearing the medal. Right, the under 15 team of Royal College, the champions in the under 15 game. Right, Bari, Nedan Gunavardana, Tehan Gunatilaka, Tilina Pereira, Lidum Karunasena, Khalid Maujud, Gisad Fernando, Ramiru Aludge, Ovidu Kaluarachi. Suleiman Shihar, Vinal Vellapili, and Madita Lianage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the Mahinda Lienage Challenge Trophy to be presented after the first leg 25 13 victory by Royal and the second leg 24 13 victory by Royal with aggregate of 49 to 26. It is Royal College winning the Mahinda Lienage Challenge Trophy. The captain, Lidum Karunasena, will collect it along with his vice captain and then we'll have the team join on stage. Thank you to the principal of Royal College, Mr. Tilak Batuheva, and congratulations to the under-15 team of Royal College, and also well done to the under-15 team of St. Thomas's College, captained by Rivin Pereira, who put up a good battle on the pool. Right, ladies and gentlemen, before we move on to the under-19 category, we need to thank our referees and our head coaches of the two teams. For this, let me invite Co-Chairman of the Joint Organising Committee, Mr. Netru Nanaikar, on stage, please. Right, it is now time to felicitate our head coaches of the two camps who have put in a lot of effort over the past few months in preparing the teams for the all-important battle. First, let me felicitate the head coach of Royal College, Mr. Yasuo Dervaselagi. And now it's time to felicitate the Thomian head coach, Sachita Jayadilaka. Mr. Wassel again, Mr. Jayathilaka have put in a lot of effort with the boys to ensure that the competitive game was available for all of us over the past two weeks. Well, up next we would like to felicitate the referees of uh, the encounter over the past two weeks and here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up to our referees from Singapore, Mr. Javia Oh, along with Mr. Ting Wai Piu. Well done to our referees and thank you, Mr. Netru Nanai Kara, for presenting the tokens on behalf of the organizing committee. 
It is now time to felicitate the under-19 teams and let me invite none other than our chief guest, Mr. Maduranga Kulatilaka, the captain of the Royal College water polo team in 2002. It is now time for the medals, starting off with runners-up Royal College. Well, in fact, in official status, there is no runners-up or champions in this year's uh, Heyman. Nevertheless, the silver medal will be presented to the Royal College water polo team as the Thomians will be retaining the trophy. Right, so... For the colleagues in the press and the media, the decision is the teams will be announced, of course, as joint winners. And Royal College collected their medals a while ago. The Royal team, Captain Randa Ranatunga, along with Vinuda Somakirti, Talal Bari, Mihin Vanigasekara, Bihandu Katugampala, Dimitri Lianagi, Yusuf Shihar, Nadil Basnaika, Anuk Mahalekam, Indim Di Silva, Yasandu Di Silva, Anu Gahadun Patirana, and Ima Di Smat. And now for and the other part of the joint winners, the other half of the joint winners, St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. Captain Yubal Bolegala, Sivali Guru Singha, Talib Mansur, Nehemia Krishna Swami, Santush Kalansurya, Aiden Tisera, Migara Guru Singha, Shehra Nawaz, Yubal Bolegala, Shrestha Anthony's, Nitish Pereira, Adesha Sendit Kumaran. Abiru Galaboda and Deshan Dimel. As our chief guest remains on stage to award the trophy, let me now invite on uh, onto the front Mr. Senakatu Korela, the secretary of the Group of 1992, to present the Group of 92 Challenge Trophy for the most outstanding player in the Under-19 game. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I turn to you. Do we have any guessers for the most outstanding player? Let me hear the cap number, if you remember. Right, we have a lot of guessers coming around. Nevertheless, the decision has been made. This player scored a total of 10 goals. But of course, most outstanding player is not only for offense. It's offense, defense and overall playing performance. And this year's most outstanding player, ladies and gentlemen, cap number six, Bigara Guru Singh of St. Thomas's College. Right, all the more for celebration and ladies and gentlemen, now it is time to hand over the trophy to the joint champions, the joint winners of the 30th Dr. R.L. Heyman Trophy. For this, this is how this is going to work. I will call upon the two captains of the two teams after the captains collect the trophy. Since the Thomians will retain the trophy, the Thomian team may come on stage. 
First up, let me have the two captains. The captain of Royal College, Randa Ranathunga, along with the captain of St. Thomas's College, Jumal Bolegala. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to present the Hammond Trophy. First leg, 15-10 to Royal. Second leg, 11-6 for St. Thomas's College. It is even Steven and we have crowned the joint champions at this milestone 30th Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy. Congratulations to both camps for all the efforts you've put in. And after a win from last year, the Tomian team will now join on stage to celebrate the retention of the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy. End of the third edition of the Dr. R. L. Heyman, the counter trophy between the traditional rivals and Thomas's and Royal, of course, uh, uh, coming in a very good fight. But uh, St. Thomas's fighting back, fighting hard to clinch the 30th edition and to retain this uh, trophy at the school by the sea with the points of 11 points to 6 in the second leg. They lost the first leg, 15 points to 10 here at the same venue, but they fought back to come back with a talent performance here. Led by Yumal Bolagala. Yumal Bolagala, of course, won the encounter when he captained the under 15 with a record score uh, with 24 points aggregate, uh, highest recorded uh, win margin in the under 15 as well. So, Yumal Bolagala coming back to clinch and retain the trophy at Mount Lavinia here in a 21 all drawn encounter. This is the fourth drawn encounter. The Thomas has now lead the win tally with 17 wins uh, against Royals 9. Royals' last win coming way back in 2019. And of course, uh, St. Thomas is uh, proving that they are still the strongholders. And of course, uh, as you can see on screen, uh, the head coach, Sacha Jajadilka, known as Sacha, a five sport colorsman for St. Thomas, is coming back out of the Asian Games cricket stint in China. So, this will be the end of the third edition from all of us here, this Papre.com team. Our technical, our production, and all of us joining us and helping out here. It's good night and take care. And have a pleasant Saturday night. Take care. Try to catch me howling out to move.